大家好，大家早上好。YouTube 的朋友，大家早上好。i t a l k i 的朋友，大家早上好。我是奔放老师 ，I'm Teacher 奔放。啊、uh, ，My name is 奔放，奔放。啊、uh, ，你可以叫我奔放老师。啊、uh, ，我是一名中文老师。啊、uh, ，我啊、uh, 有对外汉语教师证书啊。Uh, I'm a certified teacher, and、uh, I, this is the only official certificate from the Confucius Institute headquarters. 我教中文已经十年了。It's been ten years that I have been teaching Chinese. 啊、uh, ，我来自中国的东北。Ah,、uh, I come from northeast China. Ah,、uh, 我的老家叫哈尔滨。Ah,、uh, my hometown is to be called Harbin. 不知道大家听没听过我的家乡啊？呃、uh, uh, ，今天不知道有没有啊、uh, 早起的朋友 ？I don't know if ah、uh, many of you get up very early today. Ah.、Uh, 今天在我的老家，天气非常好。今天差不多二十度啊。Uh, today the weather is quite good in my hometown, about twenty degree. 你好，劳拉。Good to see you, Laura. <笑>非常好，非常好啊啊！ Uh, uh, 很高兴见到你， Laura。啊，很高兴有很多老朋友回来上课啊。Uh, 不知道有没有新的朋友啊？ Uh, Laura, 你的周末怎么样？你周末做了什么 ？What did you do in your weekend? 啊、uh, ，我这个周末我休息啊， uh, 我看看了我的朋友，我和我的朋友我们一起喝了咖啡，一起吃了中国菜啊， uh, 非常非常棒的周末。你呢 ，Laura？ 你的周末怎么样？好啊。Uh, 呃、uh, ，这个星期我会有四节课啊。Uh, I have, I will have four lessons this week. 呃、uh, ，现在我给大家简单的介绍一下我们这个星期的安排。Now I will share the screen and to introduce the plan of this week. 好啊。Uh, so 现在啊， uh, 我们可以看到啊。Uh, now we can see on the screen. 在屏幕上，我们可以看到这个星期的安排。啊、呃，今天我会给大家介绍的话题啊 ，the topic I will introduce today is， 呃，购物、买东西啊 ，shopping, buy things and 讲价 ，to negotiate the price to bargain 啊，讲价。啊 ，Marina Colin 啊，欢迎你们，欢迎你们。Uh, I think Mika also here, right? Mika 也在啊、uh, 啊，很多老朋友，我很高兴，我很高兴啊啊！ Uh, uh, 所以星期一，星期一啊， uh, 我们学习今天，今天我们学习啊， uh, 买东西 ，buy things 啊啊 ！Please add my 啊、uh, ，join the WeChat group to to get the Most updated schedule for the lesson and for the class notice. Ah,、uh, feel free to join the WeChat group, or you can join the uh the the WhatsApp group, so you won't miss any class. And 星期二啊，星期二，明天，明天我们学习啊， uh, 你最喜欢的吃的东西和饭店。Tomorrow we will learn your favorite food and the restaurant. Ah,、uh, 明天是。呃、uh, ，中午十一点半啊， uh, 注意，注意 ，be careful. Tomorrow is eleven thirty. 啊、uh, ，明天早上十一点半，我们上课，我们学习最喜欢的吃的和饭店。星期三，星期三早上九点，我们学习啊， uh, 租房子 ，to rent a house. 啊、uh, ，if you go to China. It's very important you find the right agency and you run the perfect house for you. So I will give you some tips how to run the house in China. Uh, and last but not least, ah,、uh, 星期五，星期五早上九点，我们学习啊、uh, 
做 Uber 啊，叫 Uber to call a Uber. How to talk with the Uber driver and how to travel around in China. 怎么怎么啊，在中国乘坐公共交通方式啊，很好啊。Colin, Marina, Laura, 我们开始吧。Let's get started. 啊，我们开始吧。啊。So speaking of buying things, ah,、uh, 中国人常常说啊、uh, Chinese people always say, 买买买买买买啊， uh, 你喜欢这个买，你喜欢那个买啊， uh, 你喜欢一个东西。If you like one things, one stuff, 东西 just 买买买啊， uh, 买买买。So, my my my, it's a it's an expression for us to to say ah, don't hesitate. If you see a discount, just buy it immediately. My my my. Ah,、uh, 买的意思是啊、uh, to buy. The meaning of 买 is to buy. So, my 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 is to buy to purchase. But the formal way to say shopping in Chinese is 购物购物 Buy you can buy anything, buy stuff, buy clothes, buy food, ah,、uh, buy buy car, buy house. But the 购物购物 it's more you go to the shopping mall, ah,、uh, 商场商场 or 商店 the store to to buy. To shopping on the street, which is 购物购物啊、uh, go sounds like a go 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 right to go ah,、uh, and 物 is the object ah.、Uh, To go and buy the object, to purchase the object is 购物，购物。呃、uh, ，Colin, Marina, Laura， 你们喜欢购物吗？啊、uh, ，你们在哪儿购物？你们喜欢买什么？买什么东西 ？What do you guys like to buy, and where you guys like to buy? 啊、uh, ，你们喜欢在商场购物？还是在网上购物，网上 online 啊，在网上 on the internet online 啊，在商场，商场 is shopping mall。你们喜欢在商场购物，还是在网上购物？啊，戴戴戴是在网上购物的，很好很好啊。戴 use the structure 是的 ，right to emphasize it is 啊、uh,。Online that you make purchase. 欢迎你，欢迎你带，欢迎你来我的我的课啊。Uh, 好，嗯、um, ，现在现在有啊、uh, coronavirus， 现在有病毒啊。Uh, 你们你们也常常买东西吗 ？Do you also buy things very often? 啊、uh, 啊、uh, ，recently many people 啊、uh, ，现在很多人买。卫生纸 ，right? 卫生纸 ，the toilet paper, hygienic paper, 卫生纸啊。呃，我不知道为什么很多人买卫生纸啊，但是啊，在这个时候啊，买卫生纸的人非常多，非常多。卫生纸是一种日常用品啊 ，it's a type of the daily necessities 啊。日常用品，日常 daily often use 用品啊，品 is the commodity 用 to use. So the things to use in a daily ah、uh, life very frequent. The daily necessities it's 日常用品，日常用品。呃、uh, ，你们常常买什么？日常用品，戴，你除了卫生纸，你还买什么卫生用品啊？日常用品啊，戴，你常常买什么日常用品啊？我我喜欢啊，我喜欢买吃的、喝的啊。I'm a foodie. I like to buy a lot of food, drink 啊，吃的、喝的啊。呃，我也喜欢买。买买礼物啊，买礼物 ，buy gift 啊。我喜欢给我的朋友，给我的朋友买礼物啊 ，to buy gift for my friends 啊。嗯、uh, 
啊，很多中国人，很多中国人喜欢买房子、买车啊。Uh, many Chinese people's dream is to buy a、uh, 房子 a house, a、uh, an apartment, a flight, 房子 and buy 买车 buy the car.、Um, because、uh, those represents a stable life, 一个稳定的稳定的生活啊 And many people's big dream is to buy a 房子啊，在中国买一个房子。因为房子和车，嗯，很贵，很贵，太贵了啊 ，too expensive 啊，很好，好，呃，呃，带你在哪儿？喜欢在哪儿买东西啊 ？Laura， 嗯 ，Marina、Colin， 你们喜欢在哪儿买东西？你们常常买什么？你们在哪儿购物啊？在哪儿购物？好，呃 ，Laura 也喜欢买吃的，我知道。Laura 喜欢汉堡包啊、uh, ，hamburger right？ 汉堡包啊。Uh, Marina， 呃、uh, ，no puedo ver las clases， solo veo anuncios。啊，是？嗯，呃呃 ，the other people， 呃、uh, ，别的别的朋友，你们可以看见，可以看见我的呃、uh, PPT 吗 ？Are you guys able to see my PowerPoint with the photo？ Maybe there's some delay 啊、uh,。很好啊、uh, ，participate in YouTube 啊啊啊！我不知道啊，呃、uh, uh, ，Laura Laura dicho que creo que in YouTube podéis ver bien. I'm getting advanced, so I have to watch on YouTube. Ah,、uh, ah,、uh, Jeffries. Many people mentioned that they cannot see the. The my 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 PowerPoint in the Italki link. I think it's a.、Uh, I think they can see it in YouTube. I don't know why. Um, I, let me just take a quick look. Ah, 好啊，好的，没问题啊。So my my buddy, my good friend Jeffrey is helping us to fix the problem. So guys, uh, maybe you uh just check the. Check the other website, the the YouTube. Maybe with YouTube, you can see it better. Ah, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Laura, she put a put a link. Ah, Laura has put a link here. So, ah, Marina, you can enter with the enlace that Laura has sent. I think you can see my ah diapositive better. Ah, very good, very good. Ah, thank you, Laura. Good. Uh, uh, okay. Let's continue. Ah,、uh, so for many of you, maybe you already know this one. Ah,、uh, for how much? Ah,、uh, when you buy things, 你买东西的时候啊， uh, 买东西的时候，我们常常说啊， uh, 多少钱啊， uh, 多少钱。More or less money. How much it cost? 多 a lot. 少 few. 钱 the money. How much the money? 多少钱？多少钱啊？ Uh, if you have the objects you prefer, you just point at the thing. You say, "Oh, 这个多少钱啊？这个多少钱？啊、uh, ？How much is that one? 啊、uh, ，那个 a little bit distance from you. 那个多少钱？那个多少钱？啊、uh, ？And how much if I buy two of it? Right? 买两个多少钱？买两个多少钱？ Hmm. How much if I buy five? 买五个多少钱？买五个多少钱？啊、uh, ？And how much for a cup of coffee? 一杯咖啡多少钱？一杯咖啡多少钱？三瓶啤酒多少钱 ？How much for three bottles of beer? 三瓶啤酒多少钱？啊、uh, ？So whenever you make a ah、uh, offer, you want to ask for the price, you will start. The dialogue with 多少钱？多少钱？啊，非常好。多少钱 ？Let me take a quick look here. Okay, let's continue. 啊，多少钱？好啊，这这是这是啊呃现金啊，这是现金。Those are the cash that you can see in Chinese market. 啊。呃，这是你在中国市场可以看到的现金啊。嗯、um, 
在中国啊、呃，中国的现金叫人民币啊。The currency in China we call it 人民币，人民币。人民 is the term 啊、uh, in 啊、uh, in the political environment or when we talk about the society, when we refers to the people as a whole as a group, we say 人民，人民。Is a formal way, ah,、uh, especially you will see it in the news when we talk about the country, 国家 and 人民 B is the currency, ah,、uh, so the currency of、uh, the people, ah,、uh, 人民币人民币 that's the name for Chinese currency, 人民币 Ah,、uh, and for 人民币 ah,、uh, we have two major word to tell the money, very important. One is yuan, yuan, yuan is the major word for one Chinese dollar. Ah,、uh, one unit, one piece of Chinese dollar is yuan. So, 一元，两元，三元，四元，五元 And for one tenth of a yuan, the formal name is 角，角，角 That's the one dime, ah,、uh, one Chinese dime, like、uh, ten cents in Chinese, which is 一角，一角，两角，三角，四角，五角 Both yuan and the jiao are the formal major word, ah,、uh, in Chinese. So you we will see them、uh, printed on the paper money, ah,、uh, the paper money, the paper currency, ah,、uh, we call it also 纸币 Zhi, ah, zhi is paper, ah, zhi. B, the currency, the paper, paper bill, ah, zhi bi, zhi bi. You can see all the, you can see the jiao and the yuan is printed on the zhi bi. However, in daily conversation, we don't say a lot of yuan and the jiao. Instead, for yuan, we use kuai to replace yuan when we. Buy things, 买东西，买东西的时候啊， uh, 我们说快。呃、uh, ，for instance, ah,、uh, here instead of 一元，啊、uh, ，one Chinese RMB, we will say 一块钱。Yes, 一块钱，非常好，一块钱。啊、uh, ，这个这个是五块钱，五块钱。啊、uh, ，这个是十块钱，十块钱 ，the ten RMB 啊、uh, ，and the twenty will be 二十块钱，二十块钱，非常好，五十块钱，五十块钱 ，a hundred in Chinese is 一百块钱啊，一百块钱，百 is hundred， so one hundred 一百块 ，the Chinese dollar。And 钱 the money 啊，一百块钱，一百块钱。啊、uh, ，and the the Chinese dime the one tenth of yuan 啊、uh, ，the spoken way will be 毛毛 ，instead of 脚 ，we say 毛啊、uh, in daily life. So one 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 脚 in Chinese is 一毛钱，一毛钱。Ah,、uh, and this this one, the jibi, the paper bill with the ethnic group, the ethnic group on it is much more smaller compared to the one with Chairman Mao. Ah,、uh, uh, and the the one without Chairman Mao, we have to call it Mao. Ah,、uh, 一毛钱一毛钱 and this one will be 五毛钱五毛钱啊，非常好。Uh, Laura, you are right. Ah,、uh, the one. One cent in Chinese is a fen, fen. Ah,、uh, 一分钱 is one cent of Chinese money. 一分钱 However, since it's too small, we don't use it anymore. 我们已经不用了啊，太小了，太小了啊。It's too small. Um, 最小的钱 the smallest money you can see in Chinese market is 嗯，一毛钱啊，一毛钱。啊、uh, ，so 分 we can omit 啊、uh, ，我们可以啊、uh, 不要分啊、uh, 不要分啊、uh, omit it 啊、uh, 很好
。好啊， uh, 所以这个是现金啊， uh, 这是现金 ，those are the cash you can see 啊、uh, ，很好。And、uh, 现在我们看啊， uh, 讲价，讲价，讲价 is bargaining 啊、uh,。你现在知道怎么问多少钱啊？ Uh, 呃、uh, ，你知道怎么说快 and and 呃、uh, 毛 ？Now you know how to say the dollar and the ten cents in Chinese. You can go to the market to buy things. 啊、uh, ，在中国 bargaining 啊，用中文 to bargain bargaining is 讲价讲价啊，价 represents 价格 which is price 价是价格。讲 is to to tell to explain in a more formal way. Ah,、uh, so to tell the price to explain the price back and forth, that's to bargain. Ah,、uh, bargaining, 讲价，讲价非常好，讲价啊。啊，你去一个地方啊， uh, 你可以问老板。You can ask the boss. 可以讲价吗 ？Can I negotiate? 可以讲价吗？啊，老板说啊，可以可以啊 ，you can negotiate， 可以讲价。啊、uh, ，here is a very famous place in Beijing. Ah,、uh, it's called the Xiu Shui Jie. Ah,、uh, Xiu Shui Jie. Ah,、uh, Xiu Shui Jie is famous for the for the famous brand ah、uh, bags and the、uh, the shoes. Ah,、uh, but the not all of them are like authentic one. But they have very good quality with cheaper price. Ah,、uh, so ah,、uh, a lot of people don't want to buy the real one, but they want the fake goods. Ah,、uh, Xiu Shui Jie is a place you can buy the buy the famous brand with very very cheap price. Ah,、uh, but you have to see if it's real or false. Ah,、uh, so ah,、uh, Xiu Shui Jie, Xiu Shui Jie. You go to Xiu Shui Jie 的时候啊。Uh, 你要讲价，你得讲价啊。That's a place you have to 讲价 ，negotiate, bargaining. 啊、uh, ，很多中国很多地方不用讲价啊。Uh, many places in China no need for 讲价。在市场，菜市场啊、uh, ，the open market for vegetables and the shopping malls like 秀水街 or souvenirs, you may need to 讲价，讲价啊。Uh, not very often. 我们不常常啊、uh, 讲价 ，but if you are in a situation you have to 讲价啊、uh, ，then those are the words that you need to know 啊、uh.。So first 啊、uh, ，expensive is 贵，贵啊、uh, ，and cheap is 便宜，便宜。We have a very very this is will be your 啊、uh, key sentence to to say 啊、uh,。It's too expensive. Make it cheaper. Ah,、uh, this one is 太贵了，便宜点儿啊。Uh, too expensive. 太贵了，太贵了。太 is too adverb for ah、uh, the degree adverb to express too something. So 太贵了 ，too expensive. Ah,、uh, 便宜点儿，便宜点儿。If we put the dr a little bit after the adjective, that's a command, which means to make it cheaper. Ah,、uh, please make it a little bit cheaper. 便宜点儿，便宜点儿啊。So together will be 太贵了，便宜点儿，太贵了，便宜点儿。Ah,、uh, this phrase is. Very important because in the sushi market, the the seller will always give you a crazy price, a crazy offer in the beginning. Ah,、uh, and、uh, they they set the price very high because they 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 want you to give back them an offer. Even you hear the first price very high and you give a relatively low price in that standard. They actually gain a lot of money、uh, out from the difference. So the seller is very,、uh, very, very smart. They they won't tell you a price、uh, for the second time. Instead, they will always ask you, 你说多少钱啊啊、uh, So you want cheaper? 你要便宜点儿你说多少钱 You tell me how much you would offer. 你说多少钱 
and then they will hand you over a calculator. Uh, usually like this one, and you have to put a price, uh, put a back offer to give to the seller. Uh, and in in this process, I suppose you to put 10% uh, of the original pr price. If he said 100, 100, then you put a 10, you put a 10 RMB, 10 to uh to re uh, as a as a back offer then the the seller will give you a very angry furious face like uh, impossible but don't worry he's not he or she is not really angry but as they try they are really professional in bargaining 讲价. so you just need to be uh, don't don't take it very personally you can just uh, spend more time to to negotiate for example you can say this Make it even more cheaper. 再便宜点, 再便宜点. 再 is adverb for again, like 再见, see you again, right? So again, we meet here. 再便宜点, it's again, make it cheaper. 再便宜点, again, make it even more cheaper. 再便宜点, 再便宜点. Uh, uh, and uh, the seller may say, uh, give me your best price. Uh, and then you can raise a little bit more uh, from the 10%, like to 15 or 20%. Uh, and then you say the price, you say, for example, 20 kuai, is it okay or not? 20 kuai, xing and if it's not okay, you can say, then I will go. Uh, never mind. I will just give up. 不行算了. 不行算了. You can use this 不行 for if it's not okay, 算了. Let it go. Uh, never mind. So it, this 不行算了 can be a threaten, like a very kind of threaten to the seller. Like, uh, will you take the 20 kuai? 20 if not, forget it. I will keep looking. Uh, 我, 我再看看, 我再看看, uh, I will keep looking. Uh. How? Uh, and uh, you have to pretend you are leaving, and your uh, the, your final goal is to hear the seller tells you, 你回来, 你回来, you come back, 你回来. Once it said, the seller says, uh, 你回来, you come back. That means you get the uh, desirable uh, price that you want. Uh, so 你回来, you come back. Um, Laura asking, uh, is there a reason why it's uh, 行不行? Uh, it's, ah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laura, you are right. It's a mistake here. It's, it's 行不行? Uh, I forgot a G here. Uh, it's a 行不行? Uh, okay or not okay? 行不行? Uh, 非常好. Good observation. Uh, 谢谢, Laura. So uh, one more time, negotiate. 讲价, bargaining. 讲价, uh, uh, too expensive, make it cheaper. 太贵了, 便宜点, 太贵了, 便宜点. Even more cheaper. 再便宜点, 再便宜点. So the seller ask you, 你说多少钱? 你说多少钱? Uh, uh, and you give back the offer, uh, 50块行不行? Uh, 不行算了, 不行算了. Uh, and in the end, 你回来, 你回来. Uh, those are the uh, basic offers. And for the number, you can just with the calculator, uh, no problem. 好, 我们继续, uh, let's continue. Uh, uh, 我们学了现金, uh, we've learned cash. 可是在中国我们不用很多现金, uh, however, in China, we don't use cash very often. 我们也不刷卡, uh, 我们也不常常刷卡. Also, we don't use swipe the card a lot. Uh, uh, instead, uh, uh, 我们用, uh, WeChat Pay, uh, 微信付款. 微信付款, uh, 微信 is a WeChat, a popular chatting tool like a WhatsApp, but in China it's with a lot of other functions like uh, to make a payment, to pay your 
uh, electricity fee, pay e uh, your all the utilities. Uh, you can use Weixin, uh, Weixin payment. Uh, Weixin is the Chinese name for the application WeChat. Uh, so, and the Fu Kuan, Fu Kuan, Fu means to pay, the formal way to say to pay, Fu. Kuan is money. Uh, so Fu Kuan to make the payment. Weixin Fu Kuan. Weixin Fu Kuan. We have another method. Uh, it's called Alipay. Alipay, uh, the Chinese name for Alipay is Zhi Fu Bao. Zhi Fu Bao. Zhi uh, Fu Bao is also a name for the another application. Uh, those are 50-50% um, equally uh, popular used in China. Uh, uh, if you go to China, I strongly recommend you have a, a Weixin Fu Kuan and the Zhi Fu Bao. In your mobile phone. Uh, since this time I just recently got back to China, I use cash, I use yi bai kuai, yi bai kuai, and there's no change in all the places I went. They all said, uh, no cash, no change, no change. They asked me to use WeChat Pay, use Alipay. Um, so, uh, very important. Very important. We the payment method. We have to know. So, the the uh, how do we pay, make the payment? Uh,我们怎么付款?我们怎么付款?呃,在你的微信, uh, uh, in your WeChat, 你有一个,啊,二维码,二维码,二维码 uh, is the QR code, uh, is the QR code,二维码, it looks like this, uh, uh, this is my WeChat QR code, feel free to add me if you want, uh, so, in China, when we make the payment, we have to scan the QR code. Uh, to scan in Chinese is 扫, 扫. Uh, 很多人学过, uh, 这个扫地, right? Sweep the floor. So 扫, uh, could be sweep, uh, sweep the floor. Also could be to scan, 扫. To scan the QR code, 扫二维码, 扫二维码. Uh, so here is how Chinese people fukuan. Uh, 中国人这样付款, 中国人这样付款. Uh, 他, uh, 在商店, uh, in the store, 他们放一个二维码, uh, they will put a QR code, 然后你扫二维码, you can scan. Uh, or you can pull out your own 二维码, uh, 每个人有自己的二维码, uh, 每个人有自己的二维码. Everyone has his own QR code. You can uh, put the RVMA on top of the this machine and the, it will automatically deduct money from your account. So you can also saw RVMA by putting the phone on top of the machine. Uh, 放你的手机在机器上面, uh, 扫二维码, to scan your QR code. 在饭店, uh, in the restaurant, 在饭店, 在饭店, uh, 服务员, the waiter, 服务员来, uh, 有一个机器, uh, they also have a machine, 有一个机器, uh, 机器有一个二维码, this machine has, has a QR code, 然后你扫二维码, 扫二维码. 在大的城市, uh, in bigger cities, uh, 在大的城市, uh, they can also 扫脸, uh, scan your face, uh, 脸, the face. So like in KFC, in many supermarkets, 在超市, 在KFC, 你可以扫脸付款, uh, scan the face and make the payment. 扫脸付款, 扫脸付款, uh, uh, 你什么都不用做, you need to do nothing, uh, 你什么都不用做. 你看, 你看屏幕, uh, you see the screen, 你看屏幕, and then um, they will take your money. Uh, 他们拿你的钱, uh. 
Can people pay with Apple Pay? Ah,、uh, Laura, yes. Ah,、uh, Apple Pay 在中国也，呃，也很流行啊， uh, 流行 popular 也很流行。呃、uh, ，but only with the brand, the big brand stores. Ah,、uh, like Starbucks, like uh, uh, McDonald, 麦当劳，星巴克 Those stores you can also use Apple Pay. 在小的商店、小的超市啊、uh, ，small store、small small supermarket， 在小的商店、小的超市，嗯，不太多 ，not often， 不太多啊，很好。好，呃，所以现在在中国，现金 cash， 嗯、呃，刷卡，嗯，不常用啊，不常用 ，not often used。在中国，付款，我们我们要用付款方式是微信付款和。支付宝付款啊，微信付款和支付宝支付宝付款啊，你可以扫二维码，扫二维码。啊，还有啊 ，if you want to add someone on WeChat， 哎啊,啊，新的朋友，新的朋友，那你也可以扫他的二维码啊。呃、uh, ，you can also scan the QR code of your friend to add him on your WeChat. Ah, so normally every day we we meet a new friend. We see a new friend. We often say, "Ah, I saw you. Or I scan you, or you scan me." Ah, I saw you. Or I scan you. Ah, I saw you. 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 下一个啊， uh, 不要忘了啊、uh, ，Don't forget， 不要忘了买东西以后啊， uh, 要拿你的小票啊。Uh, Don't forget to take your receipt 啊、uh, ，the little ticket， 小票，小票 ，the receipt after you make the payment 啊、uh,。付款以后，付款以后拿你的小票，拿你的小票。You can also go to the、uh, big counter to get an official official invoice. The official invoice is a 发票，发票啊，小票 receipt. But the official one, 发票，发票。啊、uh, ，我们学了 to make a payment is a 付款，付款，款 means the money. But if you don't like your things, ah,、uh, 你不喜欢你买的东西，你不喜欢你买的东西，你可以退款，退款 ，to cancel your payment, to cancel return the money, to cancel the payment is 退款，退款。呃，退 means to cancel, to retreat. Ah,、uh, 款 is the money, so return the money, 退款。啊。So you can say, "Ah,、uh, 这是我的小票 This is my receipt. 这是我的小票。我要退款。我要退款。I want to cancel the payment. 非常好啊。Uh, so 付款 makes the payment. 退款 to cancel. 啊、uh, ，return the payment. 好，呃，下一个啊， uh, 下一个。呃、uh, ，如果你去商店买东西啊。Uh, 买东西的时候啊， uh, 有哦、uh, 一个很重要的词是款式，款式。This is a very important word when you go to the store to buy things, buy stuff. 款式 is the style, the style of the product. Ah,、uh, the style of the each shoes or the the clothes. Ah,、uh, one each style is the 款式，款式。你去一个商店啊， uh, 常常他们有老款、新款啊。Uh, they often in the store they have the old styles, right? 老款，这边啊， uh, 这里这里有老款啊， uh, 那里有新款。Here they have old style, there they have the new style. 新款，新款啊。Uh, uh, for example, if I'm the seller, 啊、uh, ，I will tells you, 啊、uh, ，你好，你好，这是今年的，这是今年的新款。这是今年的新款 ，this this year's new model 啊啊，那儿是老款啊，那儿是老款 ，over there is the old style 啊。呃 ，I can also take the product in front of you. I can say 啊，你你看一看这一款，这一款 ，this this one, this model， 
这一款你喜欢吗？这一款你想要吗？这一款怎么样 ？How is this this one? Uh, or I can point. How about that mo model? That model. Ah,、uh, 那一款怎么样？那一款好吗？那一款行不行？行不行？那一款怎么样？啊、uh, ，So the major word for product is 款，款。Uh, that I said, 老款，<笑>老款 is not a 土气，老款 is 嗯、um, is more like a, uh uh it means very could be have a discount 打折啊、uh, maybe it's on sale 啊、uh, 打折 also could because it's old but it's going to clear up very soon 啊、uh, so 老款 normally indicates it's cheaper than the new 啊、uh, and the 新款 is the 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 new one, the the fashion fashionable one, very good. Ah, uh, Dai said, 土气土气 means like um, not good style, but here not necessarily bad style. It's just the、uh, uh, uh, there's new and the older one, ah,、uh, com comparable concept. 非常好，好，呃，设计 the design, ah,、uh, 设计设计，啊，我可以问我的客顾客。I can ask my customer. 我问我的顾客啊，呃，这款设计怎么样啊？这款杯子的设计怎么样啊 ？This this one cup. How about the design of this this style of a、uh, uh, cup? 这款杯子的设计怎么样啊、uh, ？And you can say, hmm, 我喜欢，我喜欢，我喜欢这款杯子的设计啊。Uh, 它有熊猫，对吧 ？Has panda on it. 我很喜欢这款杯子的设计啊。呃，颜色的 color 啊，颜色怎么样？颜色你喜欢吗？啊。呃、uh, ，for the size, we have two ways. The size we can either say 大小，大 big， 小 small. But 大小 is a noun for the size. So I can say, 啊，这这件衣服大小怎么样？大小怎么样？ Uh, or we we can use the 尺寸，尺寸，尺寸 is a little bit old-fashioned way to say the size. Ah,、uh, and 尺寸怎么样？啊、uh, ，大小怎么样？尺寸怎么样？啊，呃，很多人喜欢买牌子啊。Uh, many people like to buy the brand. Ah,、uh, the famous brand. So. 啊，牌子啊，在这个照片里边，牌子是啊，呃，普马啊，普马是牌子啊。Or you can call it 品牌，品牌啊。我喜欢这个牌子，我喜欢这个品牌啊，很好。呃、uh, ，and for the size, we have the big size, middle size, and small size, which is the 大号啊 ，large 大号 ，medium 中号。中号啊 ，small size， 小号，小号。啊，如果啊 ，if 如果你喜欢这个款式，你喜欢这个设计，你喜欢这个颜色，啊 ，the seller the will ask you 啊 ，I will tell you 喜欢你就试试。If you like, just try it 啊，喜欢你就试试，喜欢你就试试，你就试一下。是 to make a try 啊、uh, ，make a try 是 ，and the、uh, the dressing room 啊、uh, ，the room for、um, change the clothes it's 试衣间，试衣间，试 to try 接衣 is 衣服 clothes， 间 is the room the space so the dressing room 试衣间啊， uh, 我要试试。这款衣服，我要试试这件衣服啊！试衣间在哪儿？您好，试衣间在哪儿？啊，很好。呃、uh, ，after 呃、uh, 呃、uh, ，after you make a try and、uh, you can you can tell whether it's 适合你啊、uh, ，whether it's suit fit you or not fit you。适合，适合 means the color, the design, the style. Ah,、uh, 款式。啊、uh, ，the the color 颜色 ，the style 款式啊、uh, ，and the 大写呃 ，and the 呃嗯、uh, um, ，what else did we say 啊、uh, 
or the 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 颜色 the color 啊、uh, ，it's all suit to you 啊、uh, ，they 呃、uh, they fit you 啊、uh, ，then we can use 适合适合。So this clothes fits you, ah,、uh, suitable for you. 这件衣服适合你啊， uh, 很适合你。This clothes is, ah,、uh, is suitable for for you to wear at work. 这件衣服适合上班穿，上班 to go to work. 啊、uh, ，适合上班穿。适合 is a it's a verb 啊、uh, ，so here 适合 to suitable for 啊、uh, ，这件衣服的颜色不适合你。This clothes color not suit for you, not suitable for you 啊、uh, ，这件衣服的颜色不适合你。So is it uh, uh fit or not fit? It's 适合不适合啊， uh, 适合不适合，非常好啊，好。Uh, now let's see the products. Ah,、uh, we can buy in a shopping mall or store. Ah,、uh, 我们看一看我们可以啊、uh, 买什么衣服。我们购物的时候我们可以买什么啊、uh, ？Um, before I introduce the products, I want to introduce three verbs that very very important verbs related to the clothes. Ah,、uh, 穿。穿 both 穿 and die in Chinese means to wear, to wear, ah,、uh, to put on, to wear. But 穿 is only for important, more important clothes, such as what? What does it mean? Important clothes, ah,、uh, it means you have to wear it when you go outside. It's something very basic. So 穿衣服 the clothes, 穿衣服啊。Uh, 呃、uh, ，穿裤子 ，the pants 啊、uh, ，穿裤子 ，pants wear pants 啊、uh, ，穿鞋，穿鞋，鞋 for the shoes， 穿鞋，鞋啊、uh, ，socks 啊、uh, ，without socks the shoes can be 啊、uh, very rub a lot 啊、uh, ，can break your your feet right， so it's also important to have the socks 啊、uh, ，袜子，袜子 ，also wear socks 穿。袜子，穿袜子。However, for the accessories, ah,、uh, the things not so important, then we don't use 穿啊、uh, Instead, we use 带，带啊。呃，小戴 ，it's the same family name as you are. It's 带 is also a popular family name. Ah,、uh, 带 is very complicated, but ah,、uh, this is 带，带。So dive with accessories, for example, uh, uh, the watch, wristband, the bracelet, earphone, scarf, uh, sunglasses, ring, necklace, earring. You can drop all of those things at home, right? It's not that necessary. So dive, we have dive 手表啊、uh, the watch, dive 手表戴手环手环 the. The sport wristband, 运动手环 right? 运动手环。啊、uh, ，Laura asking, can you also say 你穿白色衣服好看 ？For example, ah,、oh, very good. Ah,、uh, Laura, that's very good. Ah,、uh, so 你穿白色衣服好看啊、uh, ，which means 白色衣服适合你。The white clothes suit for you. Ah,、uh, fits you. 白色衣服适合你。非常好啊。Die says a complicated character. 对，很很很麻烦的字啊，很难写的字啊，很多部分 ，many parts. 好 ，Let's continue. 啊、uh, ，So the difference between 手环 and 手链。手环 is the 啊、uh, ，usually it's 啊、uh, ，it's the material is not metal. 手链啊、uh, ，you see the 链 the character with the radical of metal. So, 手链 is more the bracelet with metal, ah,、uh, or with metal pieces to to、uh, connect all the little pieces. That's 手链手环 is can be the 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 one with the 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 um the beer the 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 leather or or the 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 one for the sports ah、uh, wristband ah、uh, 手环 that's 手环耳机耳机耳 is ear, right? 机 is machine. So 耳机 could be the headphone like this one. 耳机 
R could be the the the, the this type ah uh, earphone 耳机啊、uh, ，so both we can call it 耳机，耳机，戴耳机，我现在戴耳机。Scarf, 围巾 way to surround. 巾 is ah、uh, like a soft clothes. The soft clothes to surround your neck. That's a scarf. 围巾戴围巾戴围巾啊，戴帽子戴帽子，戴眼镜 glasses 戴眼镜 gafas 眼镜啊。呃、uh, ，the sunglasses we have two ways. 我们有两个方法，我们有两个方法说 sunglasses 啊。呃、uh, ，一个方法是墨镜啊、uh, ，more is the ink, ink, the ink glasses is sunglasses, right? 啊、uh, ，the black one 啊、uh, ，墨镜，墨镜，戴墨镜，戴墨镜。Or could the literal translation 太阳 ，the sun 太阳啊、uh, ，so 太阳镜，太阳镜 ，the sunglasses 戴太阳镜，戴墨镜啊，戴墨镜。啊。The ring is 戒指啊，戴戒指，戴戒指。项链 necklace， 项链啊。Again, we see the 链啊 ，for the bracelet， 手链啊。And the necklace， 项链，项链啊。And the earring， earring is 耳环，耳环，耳 the ear again 啊。The 环 is like a、uh, the ring， right？ The the 啊、uh,。The hook, ah,、uh, 环环 so 耳环 the earring, ah,、uh, 耳环耳环 Those accessories all we use 戴啊戴嗯穿 again 穿衣服 wear clothes, right? 穿衣服 is general term. If we can further divide it to those categories, ah,、uh, the outer clothes, the jacket, the the coat is all 外衣 Y E the clothes outside, right? Y E outer clothes, 穿外衣 The underclothes, underwear, ah,、uh, it's 内衣内衣啊、uh, Underwear will be 内裤裤 with the pants, right? 内裤内衣啊、uh, The one like inside, ah,、uh, 内衣 Coat coat is 大衣啊、uh, For winter, for ah,、uh, we the 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 one like a very big ah、uh, that. Coat is 大衣大衣 and then the formal shirt, ah,、uh, it's 衬衫衬衫 T-shirt, 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 穿 T-shirt. Suit, 西服西服 and skirt in Chinese is 裙子裙子啊穿裙子穿裙子非常好啊。Uh, the last but not least, ah,、uh, the verb for to 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 knot to tie something with a string that will be j ah j. For example, ah,、uh, the tie, the belt, the shoes tie, plastic bag, they all have a string, right? So we need to j ah、uh, to make a knot. Ah,、uh, the tie will be 领带 the necktie 领带系领带系领带 To tie the belt, 系腰带啊，系腰带。The shoes tie, 鞋带，系鞋带，系鞋带。You have a trash, right? 垃圾 in the 塑料袋。Then we have to to make a knot for the plastic bag. 系塑料袋，系塑料袋，塑料 plastic 袋 the bag 啊，系塑料袋。非常好。Now we have the clothes. Ah,、uh, 衣服我们有了衣服啊。Uh, 现在我们可以啊、uh, 做一些搭配。We can make some match. Ah,、uh, to pair things in groups, pair few stuff in in groups. Ah,、uh, so make a combination of the clothes. That's 搭配，搭配，搭配 can be a verb. Ah,、uh, 这个女孩她的搭配。Ah,、uh, 她她搭配她的衣服 right? She's uh try to ah、um, use the different clothes and the hat to to make a combination. So 她用 he she use 啊她用她用啊啊围巾围巾搭配她的衣服 
she used a scarf to to match her clothes. 她用围巾搭配她的衣服。搭配 can be a noun too. Ah,、uh, so you can say, um, 她的这个女孩的搭配怎么样？她衣服的搭配怎么样 ？How is her the combination, the match of all the clothes? Ah,、uh, how is the 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 combination? 她的搭配怎么样？ Ah,、uh, and you can say 搭配的很好啊，她、uh, 搭配的很好。She know how to match to group the clothes. Ah,、uh, 她搭配的很好。啊，她搭配的很呃很漂亮，对吧？搭配的很漂亮。我喜欢这个搭配。嗯、um, ，你们出门的时候，你们喜欢用什么搭配什么 ？What do you like to to match to to ah、uh, to make a match with? Any clothes? 你喜欢用什么搭配什么啊？我喜欢啊，我喜欢啊，我喜欢啊，西服搭配领带啊。我喜欢西服搭配领带。I like to use the tie to to match to match the suit with the tie. I like to put the suit and the tie together, right? 搭配西服和领带，搭配西服和领带啊，啊、uh, ，or you can say 我我我用啊、uh, 我用啊、uh, 墨镜搭配我的衣服。I use sunglasses to match my clothes. 我用墨镜搭搭配我的衣服啊。Uh, so the combination is 搭配，搭配。我们看看例子啊啊。Uh, So here, ah,、uh, again, 搭配 means to arrange pairs or arrange in pairs or in groups. For example, ah,、uh, uh, 搭配 is also can be an adjective. Also can be an adjective. Ah,、uh, so for example, you can say these pants with that clothes together, they are very match. They they match very well. Ah,、uh, 这条裤子跟那件衣服在一起。很搭配，很搭配啊！这条裤子跟那件衣服在一起，很搭配。These pants and that clothes together, they match really well. 啊，很搭配啊。呃、uh, ，or early I said to use 用用用这条裤子搭配那件衣服。To use these pants to match that clothes. 用这条裤子搭配那件衣服。Also can be a noun. Ah,、啊、我不喜欢这个搭配。啊，我不喜欢这个搭配。非常好啊。好，呃、uh, ，That's the class for today. 这是今天我们学习的内容。啊，今天我们学习了啊，是呃，话题是我们学习的话题是购物啊 ，shopping 购物。啊，呃，购物的时候我们买买买买买买啊。我们学习了怎么说价格啊 ，how to tell price， 价格多少钱，多少钱啊？我们学习了啊，现金的 cash in China。我们学习了讲价 bargaining， 讲价啊。好，我们也学习了付款方式啊 ，the payment method， 付款方式和啊 ，to tell the style 啊，嗯，款式，款式。还有啊、uh, ，the three different verbs to wear, 穿 to wear accessories, 带 and 系系 to to make a knot. 啊，非常好。呃，大家有没有什么问题？有没有问题要问我啊？还有大家别忘了明天啊，明天我们我们十一点半我们会学习吃的话题啊。Tomorrow, don't forget we will have the class about、uh, how to、uh, tell your favorite food and the restaurant, how to choose restaurant in China, and to how to tell、um, the、uh, how to tell、uh, what you like and don't like with the restaurant, how to、uh, have a conversation with your friend about restaurant. 好，谢谢大家，谢谢大家今天来我的课啊。Uh, 
如果你想知道最新的中文课的消息，可以加我的啊， uh, 加我的微信群啊。Uh, you can add my WeChat group for future tips and learning materials. 再次谢谢大家啊， uh, 谢谢 Laura， 谢谢 Dai 啊、uh, ，谢谢 Colin、Marina， 谢谢你们啊， uh, 一直来我的课来听啊。Uh, 我们下次见，明天见啊！ Uh, 谢谢大家，再见。Usuarios con tiempo libre se mostrarán disponibles para recibir llamadas y de esta forma ganarán recompensas ayudando a otros usuarios. Así es como conectamos personas de forma colaborativa y gratuita en nuestra aplicación. Únete a nuestra comunidad, haz nuevos amigos y mejora en todos los idiomas que quieras. Descarga Lingvi y practiquemos juntos. Este es Peter. Está aprendiendo chino. Ha intentado estudiar por su cuenta con libros, tarjetas de vocabulario y aplicaciones móviles, pero sigue teniendo problemas para hablar. Esta es María. Le encanta aprender inglés, pero no tiene oportunidades para ponerlo en práctica. Con Italki, Peter y María pueden recibir clases personales online para hablar con fluidez en otro idioma. Tú también puedes aprender un idioma en Italki. Empieza hoy en tres simples pasos. Primero, elige un idioma: inglés, alemán, chino, francés, japonés. Aitoki tiene profesores para cualquier idioma. Segundo, escoge un profesor. Con Aitoki puedes escoger entre miles de profesores con experiencia de todo el mundo. Tercero, elige el horario de tu lección. Las clases de idiomas online son el mejor método para aprender con profesores nativos. Con Aitoki tendrás un profesor de idiomas personal y conversaciones reales con hablantes nativos. Cada día miles de personas aprenden con profesores internacionales a través de Aitoki. Encuentra un profesor hoy y domina el idioma de tu lección. Hi everyone, it's Vicente, and I teach Spanish on italki.com. And today we will be talking about three grammar rules to follow when you start learning Spanish. The first one is that, as you have already heard, Spanish verbs are always conjugated. That means that they have to match with the subject of the sentence. For example, there are different pronouns in Spanish: yo, tú. El, ella, usted, nosotros, nosotras, vosotros, vosotras, and ellos, ellas, y usted. All these pronouns have their own conjugations, and it's very common for beginners to mix them up. So remember this: when you start to conjugate the verbs, they have to match. The second rule is very important as well: the Spanish nouns and adjectives has to be in the same level. Let me explain you this. If you have a noun that is feminine and plural, for example, las mujeres, the adjective that you have to use right after the noun has to be feminine and plural as well. For example, las mujeres españolas. It is the same with the articles las, female and plural. We use this article because, as I say, it's female and plural. The third rule I already mentioned before. And be careful, English speakers, because the adjectives in Spanish go after the noun, not before, like in English. This is very common for、uh, students that learn Spanish and already speak or know English. When I say it, las mujeres españolas, españolas is the adjective, and I put it after las mujeres. In English, it would be a Spanish woman, but not in Spanish. Okay. There are some occasions where the adjectives go before the nouns. That is true, but normally 
this use comes out at intermediate level or advanced level. So do not worry when you are a beginner. Thanks for watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the italki YouTube channel over here. Take a lesson with me on italki.com by clicking on my teacher profile link in the description. Hasta luego. Hi everyone, it's Vicente and I teach Spanish on italki.com and today I will be talking about seven Spanish words that are similar to their English counterpart. These words are also known as cognates. What a cognate is? A cognate is a word that has the same linguistic derivation that another word and it looks similar and when you pronounce it, it sounds almost the same. And here I will give you seven cognates so you can use them in Spanish as well. The first one is alcohol in Spanish. Guess you know what it means because it sounds pretty similar than in English, doesn't it? Number two is conclusión. This one has a different pronunciation in Spanish, but you will understand definitely when you start learning Spanish. Number three, three, <laughs> hobby. This one is completely similar. We basically took this word from English. Number four, individual. Of course, it's the same word, just different pronunciation. The next one, number five, is piercing. Yes, we use this word with the same pronunciation and meaning. Next one, number six, is informal. I like to use this one in my lessons to explain ways to greet and say goodbye because it's similar in English and is a word that the students understand very quickly. And the last are some words related to sports. If you're learning Spanish and you like sports, you're lucky because most of the words are cognates like football, tennis, baseball, volleyball, hockey, water polo, golf, surf, and so on. As you can see, almost all sports are cognates. So, talking about your hobbies should not be difficult. As you can see, there are many, and I would like to remember you that there are hundreds of cognates, and if you check them, you can be ready to your first Spanish lesson. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the italki YouTube channel for more tips on learning Spanish. Take a lesson with me on italki.com by clicking on my teacher profile link in the description. Hasta luego. Hi everyone, it's Caroline here and I teach English on italki. Today I am going to be talking about business idioms or idioms you might hear in your office or in your workplace. A student asked me a really good question the other day. He asked me whether, because I'm an, a native English speaker, do I know every single idiom? And the answer is no. Idioms are phrases or expressions that come from a particular place or a particular age group. So idioms are different in the UK to idioms in the United States. I have chosen five business idioms to talk to you about today, and you may hear them in an office in the UK or in the States. So hopefully they will be super useful for you. Idiom number one is the big picture. Imagine you go into a meeting and your boss says to you, you've lost sight of the big picture. What does that mean? That means that you are thinking too much about the small details of the project and you are so interested in those little details that you don't remember what it is you're trying to achieve. So always keep sight of the big picture. The second idiom is to go the extra mile. Now imagine you're in an interview and the interviewer says to you that they are looking for someone who always goes the extra mile. What does that mean? Does it mean they want you to run around the office every day? No, 
It means they want you to do more than just what is in the job description. They want you to go that little bit further and to take on extra responsibilities. That is going the extra mile. The third idiom is a win-win situation. A win-win situation means everybody gains something. A really good example of this is these videos that I'm making for italki. Italki gains some content for their website, some lessons for their learners, and I have a platform where students can see me and book lessons with me. It's a win-win. Italki wins and Caroline wins. The fourth idiom is word of mouth. So an example of this is think about how you found out about Italki. Did you find Italki by searching on Google? Or did you find italki because one of your friends recommended it to you? Recommendations from friends are word of mouth. It can be positive or it can be negative. If your company gets bad word of mouth, it is going to be a very difficult time for your company because people really listen to the opinions of their friends. So make sure whatever you do, <laughs> you have good word of mouth about it. The fifth and final business idiom is to touch base. My manager used to say this to me a lot. To touch base means to have a very quick and short meeting about a project or something that you are working on. It might only be five minutes of your time, but in that time, you will check that your understanding of the project is the same as your manager's understanding of the project. So I have a challenge for you. In your next lesson, I want you to ask your teacher if you can touch base about what you have learned in your lessons so far. This could be five minutes at the end of the lesson where you review all of the different subjects that you have been studying. You're touching base about the things you have covered so far. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to italki by clicking somewhere. <laughs> And you can take a lesson with me by clicking on my teacher profile in the description box. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Welcome back to the Stop Being Boring When Speaking English video series. When speaking to native English speakers, it's useful to use a variety of vocabulary to make your conversation sound more interesting and flow. Why not spice up your language a little bit and impress others with your speaking abilities? In this next video, we will take a look at some American and British slang. Number one, American. John Hancock. John Hancock. Mm -hmm. So that's a person. It's a name of a person, yes. And it's American slang. Mm -hmm. What do you think it means? Um, I just got John Hancock. Does it mean that wasted? Certainly not. Give, give me an example. Okay, so can I please have your John Hancock at the bottom of this paper? Come on, you gotta get it now. Is it a signature? Yes, you got it! That was easy. Okay, awesome. Number one, British. Peak. What does peak mean? Like, uh, taking a peak. No, that's, that's Sorry, that's not taking a peak. That, that's not slack. This is taking a peak. Well, that's just like taking a peak, that's not slang. Oh. Like in a slang of a peak. Like the peak of a mountain? That's not slang, that's actually yeah, like that is the peak of a mountain. I don't know, tell me. Okay, let me give you an example. So, say you go out, you go out one night, and you lose your purse, your keys, Is it like phone. the most horrible situation you can be in? Yeah, exactly. You'd be like, that's so peak. You'd be like, oh, so, yeah. How was your night? It was so peak. I just got fired. So peak. Exactly. So it's like the peak of badness, I guess. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. okay. So the peak. Two, American. Jacked. Jacked. Does Jacked. that does that mean like hench? What does hench mean? Like say you go to the gym. Don't answer back with a slang word. <laughs> <laughs> so the British equivalent of jacked would be hench, I think. So if someone's like really ripped. Yes, exactly. Okay. Go to the gym, work out a lot. Like, Whoa, look at him, he's so jacked. We would say hench. Number two, British. Peng. 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 P E N G. Peng. Like someone. 
Hello, hello. I'm so happy to be here with you today. I am Teacher D from italki. You can check out my profile um, for more about what I teach. I've been in education for over 20 years and experience teaching ESL, uh, English as a second language for over seven years. And today we are going to talk about one of my very favorite subjects and that is writing well hmm not really writing but um making an outline hello 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 carol nice to see you again if you are watching please give me a shout out so i can say hello to you i love to uh, interact with the students so let's get started. I'm going to uh, share my screen with you. Oh, um, and change this into my outline view so that, um, excuse me, sorry for one moment. Um, the, the outline is so important to uh, English language, and I don't think people realize that it's it's not only important for writing, but it can help you with your speaking tasks for your IELTS or your TOEFL or for your other speaking task tests uh, that you take. And I'm going to show you today the parts of an outline, the parts of an essay, and how you can use them for writing and how you can use them for speaking. And what I've been calling this is the golden key. So um, as we've as I said, if you've watched me before, uh, my name is Teacher D. I have over 20 years of experience in education, over seven years of teaching in English language because I, I first lived in Massachusetts in the United States, and then I lived for over seven years in Ecuador. I have a, uh, and then I returned in living in the United in. United States again in Ecuador. I have a bachelor's in early language education and I am TESOL certified. And another thing that has really been helpful to me for teaching speakers of other languages is that I also learned another language. And so there's a little insight into how languages are learned because I've done that. So uh, I see that we have six people online and I would like to play a little warm-up game called bingo and this is irregular verb bingo irregular verb bingo and as you can see I have the bingo board here and I can't really mark it up so I'm gonna mark it up here on a paper how we're gonna do this is I'm going to roll two dice I'm gonna roll the bingo dice here and I'm going to roll the numbers and we are going to play by seeing that verb that comes up with the dice and changing it to the irregular form. I love to practice verbs. They're very, very important to the English language. So let's go. We're going to roll both of these at the same time. It's probably going to make some noise here on my desk, but let's go. I too. Yeah, I too. I too is eat and who knows the past form of eat. What is the past form of eat? Past form of eat. I bet Carol knows it. Carol is the only one who has said hello. <laughs> the past form of eat. Eat, ate, eaten. That's right, Carol, you got it. Let's roll again. G, good job, Rover, hello. G5, G5, G5 is say, say. What's the past of say? 
I'm going to keep going so that we can get through our whole lesson today. I'm going to roll these again while you're telling me the past of say. The past of say. That's right. Said. Said. O4. I don't know if that's O is not showing up. O4. Oh, you know what? That's supposed to be O5. That's okay. <laughs> o4. O4 is no. 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 O4. What is the past of no? New and known. Carol, you are on the roll today. All right, let's go N. Three and three. Hang. Now this one's hard. This one is a tricky one. Do you remember tricky things in English? Irregular verbs is one of them. Hang. What's the past form of hang? What's the past form of hang? Oh, did I say the wrong one? Yes, the past of swim. I'm sorry. Swim, swam, and swum. Yes, very good. All right, B5, blow. Sorry about that, everyone. It's very early here today. We'll save hang. Okay, G B5, B5, blow. I'm going to roll another one while you give me those two. Uh, we got G2, G2, sing, blow and blown, N, blow and blown with an N. I'm not sure if that was a typo or not, but it's blow, blue, and blown. And now we're looking for G2, G2 is put. G2 put. Past of G2 put. Come on, let's get a bingo. All right, O2, O2, O2. O2, O2, O2. get, ah. All right, I'm sorry. Let me put this in the chat because I'm actually not saying these right. Um, the last one was G, uh, G2 should be get, and O2 is put. So give me the past for get and give me the past for put. Put, put, put. That's right. That's right for put. And how about get? How, go, how about get while I, while I roll again? B5, B5, B5. We already did B5. Let me roll it again. Get, got, gotten. That's right. Very good. Okay, B3. Run, run, B3. B3, run. We're just going to do a couple more of these. You're warmed up now. O4, we've already done that one. O1, O1 is right. So we're looking for run and right. Run and right. Run, ran, run. That's right, Carol. And how about right? Great job, Carol and Rober. Thank you. Let's roll one more. O oh, three. Read. Read. O oh, three. Read. So we're looking for the past of write and the past of read. Write, wrote, written. Yes, and when we actually pronounce that, 
written. It's the silent T, like we talked about last time. Silent T, written. And read, read, read. That is a tricky one because the spelling of the word stays the same, but the pronunciation changes. Read, and then it sounds like the color, red. Read, red, red. What do you say? One more? Let's do one more and try to get a bingo. There's two ways that we can get a bingo. Let's see. I4 or B5. So come on, I4. Come on, B5. And B5. Wow. We got B5. Leave. And that is bingo. B. I N G O B I N G O B I N G O and bingo is the name o. Okay, leave. What is the past forms of leave? Excuse me, it is 3 a.m. here. <laughs> okay. So, great job with that. Oh, we're waiting for leave. I know you know it. You've known all of these. And let's go on in our, in our presentation here. As I said, outlines are the key, the golden key, the golden key for writing and speaking tasks. Yes, Carol, leave left, left. That's right. You got it. The golden key. So if you can master outlines, then you're going to be able to complete these tasks very easily. So let's get started with outlines, okay? Our outlines have a lot to do with essay writing. So this is going to help you with writing essays as well. So we're going to go over each part of an essay. The essay is an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Anytime you write an academic essay, it should have these very distinct parts. It's very important to clarify your writing in this manner by using these, this introduction, body, and conclusion. And then, once you do that and organize the flow of your of your thoughts, you can transfer that over to write to speaking tasks. And I'm going to show you how to do that towards the end of the lesson. But let's begin with the introduction, okay? The introduction is the first impression that you are going to make on your listener or on your reader is very, very important. It has three parts to it. The first thing that you have to do is get your reader or your listener's attention. Now, I know that a lot of times we're very tempted to repeat the question, but this is not how we can get attention. And we're going to talk about attention getters and how to use those. They're the very first thing that you're going to write or that you're going to say. Also, we need connecting statements. Connecting statements are like a preview of what you are going to write about or what you are going to talk about. And then you need your thesis or your purpose of writing or, or speaking. All of this is going to lead up to your body. It's going to give your listener or your reader a very clear indication what you're going to talk about. Now, using these, uh, this outline is going to be useful for writing any essay that you have to write, giving any presentation that you have to give, and to do any speaking task that you're assigned for. So let's look closer into these introductory parts. Now you can see that I've put a triangle here. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in there. And this is a lot of lecture here, but I, I don't like lecture. <laughs> um, so if you have any questions or you want to know anything at all, please ask, ask 
and I, as soon as I see it, I will answer it. Now you see here that I've put an upside down triangle, and that is to help you remember the order of these parts and how much information you're going to put into them. Your attention getter is going to be really the biggest part of your introduction. Then your connecting statement and then your thesis. Your thesis is only going to be one sentence. So let's talk about the hook. The, the hook is your first impression on your, yes, I've got examples of everything for you, Carol. Thank you. Yeah. You, the hook is what gets your attention and makes the first impression. So it's super, super important. And a lot of times, like I said, you'll be given a speaking topic like talk about your neighborhood and you will say something like, my neighborhood. Talk about my neighborhood. Okay, so my neighborhood is. All right, we don't necessarily want to start that way. And every examiner has heard the presentation that way a million times. So you got to think of something a little bit more interesting, okay? You can ask a question. Hmm my neighborhood and you could think of a question that you can ask about your neighborhood okay ha huh, how old is my neighborhood my neighborhood is a relatively new neighborhood okay so you could ask a question it should be relevant to the rest of what you're going to say and i'm just kind of pulling things out of the air um, or you could give a statistic my neighborhood was built in 1943. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and you could tell a short story or a joke. Wow, we moved into my neighborhood about five years ago and it was pouring rain that day and the neighbors were so great. They all came out and helped us move our stuff so fast. Okay, so you could give a little story. You could use a famous quote. I don't know any famous quotes about uh, neighborhoods, so I'm not going to give that example. But you can use these types of things to start your essay, to start your presentation, to start your speaking task, and be a little bit different from what everybody has heard a million times. Okay? So let me show you just a couple of examples. I chose the topic, the golden key, and here I've written a couple of examples okay I put a quote it's not famous it's my quote <laughs> and I just came up with it for this lesson learn to master the outline and you will learn to have the golden key to speaking and writing tasks okay so that that's a hook that will lead into the connecting statements and the thesis okay or a statistic, according to EnglishClub.com, 67% of the English language students claim that speaking was the most difficult task of learning language. They're learning the language. That was out of 15 people that they polled, by the way. 67% of 15 people said that speaking was the most difficult. Okay. So what I've been trying to do is give you uh, better ways of learning speaking, understanding language better, and understanding how to use some tools to help you through this. All right, so there's a couple of examples of hooks. One is a famous quote, the other is a statistic. Let's move on to connecting statements. Think of your connecting statements as a movie preview. When you see a movie preview, they give you just a couple of flashes of the highlights, maybe some of the best scenes from the movie to get you interested in what's coming. Oh, I want to see that movie. That's a lot, a lot of times that's what we say when we see a good movie preview. And so that's what our goal is when we're creating the outline, when we're creating an essay, a presentation, or a speaking task. We want to be interesting to our listener or to our reader, okay? So we want to give them a sneak peek of what we're going to talk about that's going to pull them in and want them to know more, okay?
And we do that by telling them what we're going to talk about. We're going to tell them what we're going to talk about in the order that it will appear. Okay, so I'm going to say one, two, three, and then in the body of the essay, one comes first, then two, then three. That's important to keep your flow. Okay, flow is very important here. All right, so that, that's connecting statements. Usually that is one to two sentences long. Um, this also is going to, for essays, is going to depend on how long your subject, your essay is, and how it, detailed it is. Determines how your connecting statements are made and how many of them are made. But for a speaking task, for an IELTS speaking task or a TOEFL speaking task, that would be really one sentence for all three of these parts because you don't have a lot of time to speak. And trust me, once you master this, it's going to be very easy for you to fill up all of the time and more that you have on a TOEFL or IELTS speaking task. You're given one to two minutes usually to speak on a topic. You're gonna be able to do that quite easily after we finish this. Okay, so let's move on, connecting statements. Do you have any questions? I'm going to give you an example. Any questions? Please, if you have questions, please ask them. I want you to ask so that you fully understand. That's, that's the most important for me is that you understand. So here's an example. In the it, today's lesson, we're going to talk about the introduction, the body, and the conclusion, and how the outline is going to help you. So that's, the, that's what I've used for these examples, all right? Defining the introduction, body, and conclusion will lead to an understanding of the structure of the outline. This is not my thesis. Be very careful when you're wording this, that it doesn't appear to be a thesis. This is introducing what we're going to talk about. Okay, so it's really sort of a list, but we want to make it interesting by using language such as lead to an understanding of structure. I could have said defining the introduction, body, conclusion, and outline will help you with speaking and writing. Yes, but this is a more interesting statement. Don't you agree? Okay, and we always want to try to be more interesting, playing with the language. Once you master the sentence structure that we talked about or last week, the sentence structure, then we can play with that sentence, sentence structure and make our writing and speaking more interesting, okay? So that's what I've done here, and that's my connection example. It leads into what's coming next. And then we've got to put our thesis or our purpose in. Why are you writing? Why are you presenting? Why are you speaking? This is going to be one specific statement about why you're doing, why you're talking, what you're talking about, why you're talking about it, okay? And really keep it to one sentence. Occasionally you can do two, but the I, but you really want to keep the idea of one sentence because you want your reader or your listener to understand that this is why you're here. This is what you're telling them, okay? And yes, and I always say you want your reader or your listener to, okay, because that's, the, that's why you're writing, right? Now, how many of us are going to sit down and write a, a four-page essay on a subject that we're not assigned for in an academic setting like a college or university? Not many of us, right? So it, this is why, uh, I mean, yes, after a while we might. We might be uh, interested in writing research papers and all of that, but who do we write those for? Yeah, we gain knowledge from them, but we want to share that knowledge with others. We want others to read that. So our main purpose when we are writing or speaking is for the other person, right? It's for the other person. We have to make it as easy on them as we can. And honestly, that's what IELTS is looking for. 
easy understanding. If you can be easily understood, that's going to gain you a lot of points for your IELTS speaking and writing tasks. Okay? So make sure your thesis is very specific and it's one sentence that's defined as a thesis or a purpose. Okay? So an example would be learning how to create this outline will save you hours of work and suffering. And I should have written, help you master speaking and writing in English. That's, that's really what this is about. The golden key to mastering speaking and writing in English. Okay? But that's okay. This shows you the very specific purpose of how, why am I writing about the introduction, the body, the conclusion, and the outline. Why am I talking about these three things today? Okay? Because learning it will create will create will save you time save you suffering and give you the golden key that you need for mastering english okay everybody with me so far so good no questions remember if you have a question please ask it let's move on to the body okay the body consists of the paragraphs and i'm going to show you later i wrote a brief essay for this presentation to you. It has a very physical shape as well. And this is what your bodies should look like. Notice that the first word is indented. That's five spaces or one tab button on your keyboard. Okay. It moved over five spaces and then it just writes until the end of the, the paragraph. So introduction could end in the middle of a line. Here it doesn't, um, but wherever that ends, all of this paragraph should be one idea, okay? If you move to another idea, you need to create a new paragraph for writing for writing purposes. Now speaking purposes, we're we're going to we're going to change this just a little bit for speaking, but um, for your for writing you'll have your main points. Sometimes you only have one main point. Sometimes you have two, three, sometimes you have 10. It all depends on the purpose of what your writing is. But you have to clearly define your main point, okay? And you have to define your second main point and your third main point. And you have to clearly define those. And each will have at least one paragraph of its own. So those paragraphs are going to look physically like this. Okay? And it's where you will expound upon your the idea that you mentioned in the introduction. All right? So, for example, my first main point was... The introduction. So I talked all about the introduction. That was main point one. Now I'm talking about the body. So all of my information about the body is going to be in main point two. Hello, Shun Ho. Good to see you again. Thank you. And let me see. Carol says, should we think about all of these things also with the writing, a writing of 200 words? Yes, Carol. Yes, you can. But you're going to you're going to use like one sentence for everything for a 200 word essay okay you're gonna you're really gonna shave it down you could think of it more as a speaking task for 200 words and it could be only one paragraph also for 200 words that's not a lot of words but longer tasks are going to look like this um, so a 200 word essay is really only going to have one main point. You can't focus on a bunch of things in a one in a 200 word essay. You can only focus on one thing and that's what I suggest you do. Choose one and focus on that. Okay? Okay. Now, the the body is the most complicated part of your essay or your speaking task because that's where all of your information is. So this is the area that's going to get the most work and this is the area that you should focus on first. Um, and I'm gonna talk more and more about the outline after we get through this, all right? But these are the parts of the, main, the body paragraphs. They're each like a mini introduction 
so then the introduction had three point parts. Okay, that was the hook, the connecting ideas, and the in the um, the thesis. So here we're going to use a main point to introduce what this paragraph is going to be about. And then we're going to use supporting arguments and details. That's where all your information is. That's where all of your research for that specific point is. That's where you prove what you, what you think about that point. Although you never use I unless you are asked to give your opinion specifically saying, please give your opinion about a subject. Other than that, we never use I in academic writing. Um, you can use it when you're doing the speaking tasks because this is that's different than writing but anyway supporting argument and details are going to go into that that paragraph in the middle of it after your introductory statement saying kind of like this is what I'm talking about in this paragraph and then you give all of the supporting details and arguments for that and you give it a conclusion and transition into the next point okay Camila hello good to see you I do not know what the program is today. I'm sorry, Camila. I'm sorry. I have, I'm very, very busy, so I really just kind of do what I need to do and let everyone else take care of theirs. I'm very sorry. If we have time, I'll look it up and let you know, okay? All right, so that's all for the paragraph. So let's move into the conclusion. So see, that would be a conclusion and a lead into the next point. All right. Now, conclusion. Look at the shape of this. Yes, you can use you. You can use you. But I would like to caution you away from using those words when you're writing an academic essay. Really, you should try to keep it as neutral as possible and present your, your ideas in a way that does not include those personal pronouns of I, you. We is better, but still, um, you can avoid that by saying things like according to or studies have shown, um, it, 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 we, have, we have found um, would, you know, it, it's a little bit personal. It talks about like an organization that you are involved in. Sometimes I think people like to use we can see by the research, but you can change that to a generic statement like the research shows or here the research shows instead of using we. And and I would say that we want to steer as far away from using you or I as you can, okay? Unless, like I said, it's a personal opinion essay. And even then, you can steer away from it. Excuse me while I, I drink. Thank you for that question, Carol. Thank you. Okay, so let's look at our, our, our other way triangle. So our introductory triangle was this way because our hook was going to be the biggest part and then our connecting ideas and then our thesis. Now we're going to flip that around, okay? And you're going to close everything that you talked about in the body with a restatement of your thesis. Restatement is not repeat. Repeat means you do the same thing again. Restate means we're going to work those words around and put them in a different way, like paraphrasing. I don't know if you've learned paraphrasing, but if you have learned paraphrasing, then you're going to restate your thesis in a different way, right? You're going to prove your thesis. You're going to say something like, the research shown here has proven that the introduction, the body, and the conclusion are intricate details of an outline and that that outline can help save you time and effort and is the golden key to writing and speaking tasks, okay? So you're just proving that you have accomplished the goal that you said that you're going to accomplish in your thesis in the, in the introduction, okay? And then you're going to use a third, the, a connection, 
your third part, is there going to be a connection to the hook that you started out with? Some kind of really strong closing statement. Now, I like to say, come in with a bang, go out with a bang. Get their attention and leave them saying, wow, that was great. Or make them have a feeling of wanting to do something based on what you've said, what you've shown them, okay? Or leaving some kind of lasting impression on them. So that does not include saying, thank you, that's all. We don't want to say that ever, ever, okay? And I'm going to, I'm really going to emphasize that because I know that we get to the conclusion, we have the very last bit, and because we don't have a strong closing statement, we're left with, thank you, that's all. <laughs> And I understand. I've been there. I have. But that's why going through this process, that will help you because now you're going to connect to that hook that you started off with. Okay? Any questions, comments? Okay, the conclusion. These are just the parts. This is not the outline yet. We're coming up to that part. Okay, so um, I want to remind you about a conclusion in no matter whether it's writing, speaking, presenting, no new information should be presented in the conclusion. No new information. So we want to steer away from using statistics in the closing statements, okay, because that would be new information. You may use that as your hook in the beginning. You may use that in your body, but try not to do that at the end, okay? No new information. Everything new is should be in your body. It's not a summary. Do not recap everything that you talked about, okay? It's a summary of your main points, you're going to re-say those main points by looking at the introduction, the body, and the conclusion, and learning to put it in an outline. We can master reading, we can master speaking and writing tasks in English. So I didn't tell you everything that I, I talked about. I talked, I told you about those main points again. Okay, so that's very important. And remember, I already said this before, it's a restate, not a repeat of the thesis. And I'm going to show you these parts, okay? End well with a very strong closing statement. And you can do the same thing. You can ask a question. You can do a call to action. I suggest that you master all of these and get your golden key, <laughs> okay? No thank yous. No that's all. No very well, okay, I'm finished, none of that, okay? End with a good, strong statement. Okay, so let's take a look at this essay. Now, we're not going to read the whole thing. I'm not going to sit here and read this to you. But I wanted you to see that this is physically what your essay should look like. Now, I wonder if I have a pointer. I do. Okay, so here's my pointer. This here this is the introduction. It is one paragraph long. And I'm sorry, I don't know how long this, this essay is. Here is the indentation, okay, for the introduction. And then I, I started off with that quotation, okay? And it's my own quotation. It's not famous. I am nobody, <laughs> okay? But there's, that's how I started this essay. And then I give the connecting points. Writing and speaking tasks consist of an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. All right? So I'm, I'm, I'm previewing what we're going to discuss. And then learning how to create this outline will save you hours of work and suffering. This is my thesis. This is what I'm trying to prove. And I really should have put something about mastering um, mastering the language because it will help you master the language, okay? Now we're going to move into, this is the body. So this paragraph, this paragraph, this paragraph, and this paragraph. This is a four-paragraph essay, okay? And it, this is the body. Each section is clearly, clearly defined physically. I'm talking about what you're actually seeing on the page now, okay? 
your essay should look like this. It should not look like one block, okay? Each main point should be indented. That's this right here. This is the indentation. Here and here. Here's your indentation. Here's your indentation, right? Every new paragraph is indentated, okay? Yes, absolutely, Carol. Yes, use quotations from famous people. They're much more powerful if people know them. It gives you more weight. Um, I just put this here to be funny, you know, and to and to drive the point home. But yes, it's it's actually recommended to use from famous people, um, especially people that are well known, because that will get people's interest peaked, right? Or you could also include something from your research here. If you're doing a research topic, you could put a research quotation here that's relevant to your entire thing, to your entire essay, okay, if you're doing an essay. You could put it in a speaking task if you're very good with quotes from famous people. I'm not. I don't, <laughs> I don't really follow famous people all that much. I'm very busy teaching. So, um, uh, but if you had a speaking task about your neighborhood, you could say, you know, uh, who knows, something somebody famous said about the neighborhood to get, get your uh, speaker's attention. Oh, you know, let's, let's see a famous person. Uh, I don't know a lot of famous people, but let's say Audrey Hepburn. She's an old actress in the United States. Audrey Hepburn said that living in the best neighborhood in town really helped to create a happy lifestyle. And then you can talk about your neighborhood. My neighborhood is one of the best in town because this, this, this. Um, so, yes, famous people, they carry a lot of weight. And the more you can prove your expertise on a subject, the better, the better the listener or the reader is at receiving the information you're going to give them. Okay, so back to back to the body. You can see the introduction is it's I I, I state that that's what we're talking about in this paragraph, and then I back up the information. This is the information about the introduction. And this is not a good essay, so please do not copy it. It's not a good essay. I just wrote it so that I could show you the parts and the physical outline that you should see when you're finished writing. Okay? And then this is right, this is the conclusion statement right here. Okay? Then we move on to the body. The body is the meat of the task. All right? Oh, yes. And your body should be three sentences long at least, unless you're writing 200 word essay. If you're writing 200 word essay, you don't need three sentences. That's a little bit different. You still use the same outline. You still want to have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion, but it's not going to be three sentences long, okay? And here is the concluding statement and in lead into the next paragraph. The final step, and the often the easiest, is the conclusion, okay? So it's saying, we're finished talking about the body, now we're going to go to the conclusion, okay? And the final part is the conclusion, all right? And then it talks about what the conclusion consists of. And the last sentence is of, of the conclusion is very important since it is the last impression. So that concludes, by talking about the last sentence, that concludes all of the information about the conclusion. And we're going to go on now to putting it all together in an outline. Okay, that's putting together an outline. That is what this paragraph is about. Okay, so do you see how I said that we kind of structure each paragraph like our introduction? We have the first introductory, this is what we're going to talk about, and the conclusion. So each one has those three parts, okay? And then we are going to conclude our essay. Here is the restatement of my thesis. So my thesis here was learning how to create this outline will save you hours of work and suffering. That was my original thesis. So I have restated, I have not repeated, I have restated that here. Creating an outline allows one to maximize time limits and work effortlessly through major part of the assignment. Okay, so that's a different way to say the same thing. And then I do not 
summarize what I've written, I summarize those main points. Use the introduction, body, conclusion, and main points to create an outline before you begin, and I can't see what I've written, <laughs> the task. Okay, so you see I've restated and resummarized, I've restated and summarized those main points. Didn't summarize what information this holds because it's all there. You don't want to be repetitive and lose the, the audience, right, to lose your reader or your listener. Okay, and then the last line going out with a bang, these tips are the golden key to unlocking success in speaking and writing tasks for English language learners, okay? So that connects directly to the quote that was given at the beginning of the essay, and it leaves a lasting statement, that golden key. That's what I want you to remember of this is the golden key to unlocking English language, okay? All right, so there we go. Uh, let's see if I can shut this off and move on. So again, your essay should look like this. It should not be one long paragraph, and it should not be just random paragraphs. Your paragraphs are very defined by the introduction, each main point, and the conclusion. So, but again, this is not an essay writing. This is outlines. So let's get to the outline. Now, I spent so much time on that because it really, it's necessary for you to understand the parts of the outline in order to put the outline together. So what you would do is you would get a piece of paper and you would create something that looks like this. You're going to have, let me show you on your white, on my whiteboard. Okay, so you're going to have something here that would be like intro, introduction, okay? And you're going to have one, two, three, okay? And then you're going to have body, and you're going to see all of these parts. One, two, three, and a conclusion. Conclu conclusion. We're going to pretend I spelled that right. One, two, three, okay? So you're going to create something that looks like this on a piece of paper with no words, right? Okay, this is, this is what you're going to do before you write anything. And we're going to talk about how we change this for speaking after, okay? And then you're going to write something very short. You're not writing sentences here. You're just writing your ideas, okay? So this is going to be the hook. English is tricky. Okay. And then this is going to be connecting statements and then boom, 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 your, th your three or four connecting statements. Okay. Your, th your, your outline, it will take you some time to create it because um, you are, are going to pull your body pieces into this. Okay. And your body is where the major work is going to take place. And your body directly influences what happens in the introduction. So don't be afraid to change your introduction based on what happens with your body. If you do some research and it kind of changes some things in here that in here that you thought, then you go ahead and change them in your introduction. Go ahead and change those connecting statements to reflect what your body says. It's not like once you write it, that's it. It has to stay that way. No, that's why we revise and we edit and we go through this process. But the in, this, this is the outline of that, okay? So you're just going to write down the major ideas that you're going to include. You're not writing sentences here. So master outline. It's like, it's like a prompt to get you to remember what you're going to talk about or what you're going to write about. In this case, it's write about. Okay. Here's your body. This is what your body outline would look like. And I've used my, uh, my lesson here as my outline. So you can see here's my main point, the introduction. The, in my introduction paragraph included the parts of the paragraph the revi to revise the introduction after you work on your body. And then it leads to the body. Second point was the body the parts of the body, the fact that it takes the most work, it's three sentences long, it leads to the conclusion. So you see here, we're not writing all of the sentences. Here, if you're doing a research paper, you would put in, uh, you know, research, uh, doctor, 
so-and-so title of the article, date and page, and a little bit about the quotation. So that reminds you to put that into your, your essay if you're writing a research essay, okay? And um, then you finish, this is your, the rest of the body. I couldn't fit it all on one page. And if you can imagine, this is the conclusion, all right? Restate the thesis, outline maximizing time and effort, summarizing statements, strong ending, and that's where you would put golden key. That's where you're gonna put what your, what your strong ending is going to be. So if you can imagine these parts, this introduction on a paper similar to setting it up similar to this, you do this before you write anything, okay? Do this before you write anything. And then just plug information into here as you're brainstorming and coming up with these ideas or researching, you're gonna put those into your introduction, okay? And if I made this all on one page, it would be quite small. It would be, it would be like, it would be like this. It, you, you wouldn't be able to see it. So I really want you to try to visualize how this is going to look on a piece of paper. It's not sentences. It's like the skeleton of your, of your task, okay? Connecting statements are hard to find. Uh, this is, it's it really all it is, is telling what you're going to talk about in that paragraph. Don't make your connecting statements first. Make your outline first, okay? And you're gonna talk about a certain topic here, right? You're gonna talk about a sec another topic here, and then you're gonna talk about another topic here. So if you don't even worry about the connecting statements, skip that, skip it. Put it down, write, you know, write the outline like this, and then Put all of your body information in before you write anything here. That's my suggestion. Just because our essays flow from introduction, body, and conclusion, that's not the way we have to work on them. Really, our work takes place first in the body. So get your body worked out, and then it's going to be very easy for you to go back and work on these introductions. So it depends on what your topic is. You're gonna pick a topic. You're gonna brainstorm what you wanna talk about. Just make a big list on your topic. So if you're gonna talk about medicine, make a big list of all the medicines you can think of. And then choose the ones that you're gonna focus on here, okay? Or medicine and what medicine treats. I mean, just make a big list about what medicine treats, okay? Then you're going to choose the main points that you want to talk about. You can't possibly talk about everything, right? Okay, so then once you figure out what you're going to talk about, that gives you your connecting points. Hopefully that, that will help you, Carol, and it will be a lot easier to come up with those connecting points, okay? Work on the body. Focus on what you're gonna what what your what the meat of your of your project is, then you can come up with connecting tasks. All right. And after you do all of this and get this body worked out, plug in the information here and here. It's gonna be a lot easier. Then you sit down and you write it, and it's so much easier to write because you just follow through here. You just follow this and write it the way that you've outlined it. Now, for speaking tasks, we only have a few minutes left. Um, did that help, Carol? Do you, do, you, do you think? I think if you go through the process, if you, if you use this in a process one time, you're going to find it's, it's amazing. Now, for speaking tasks, what you're going to do, you're given a certain amount of time. Usually, it's about one minute. For IELTS, it's about one minute that you can prepare. So that does, that's not a lot of time. So you need to practice this before you go and take your test. Don't walk in there thinking, oh, I got it. No, practice this first, okay? Label your paper with an I, B, C, okay? So that's going to be like, like this. You're going to take that that paper that they give you to make your notes on, and you're going to label that I, B, C. I, B, C, okay? And then again, work on this first. Who, 
what, where, why, how, whatever your points are going to be. Write down a who, my father. Okay? Write down a, a what, restaurant. Maybe you have to talk about your favorite restaurants. Okay? Where, my city. And why, great food. Great atmosphere. Okay? Okay, what's the hook? Uh, Chinese, American Chinese food, okay? American Chinese food is so popular, okay? And then your connection. My, my father and I go to this great Chinese restaurant in my, in my, uh, in my city. And then your, connect, your purpose. I'd like to tell you about it. Simple. Okay? Okay? You're, and, and I'd like to tell you or tell you. You're just writing down ideas, okay? And then your conclusion. Maybe you can come with me someday. Or maybe you could visit. If you're ever in my city, okay? That's going to be, that's going to close everything up and that's going to give a good lasting impression, all right? So now you see how quickly I did that? Now I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to take what I just wrote down here and I'm going to say, I've been given the topic to uh, speak about my favorite restaurant, okay? And here we go. American Chinese food is so popular in the United States. My father and I go to this amazing Chinese restaurant in my city that I'd like to tell you about. I, got, I like to go with my father because we've been doing it for many, many years. Ever since I could remember, he's taken me to this restaurant. So I really, uh, I really enjoy going because it brings some fond memories of time that I've spent with my father. The restaurant is called China, China Walk. There's actually one in my city called China Walk. The restaurant is called China Walk, and it's located in the center of my city. So it's in a very great uh, place where lots of people know about it and go and visit it. It doesn't have the greatest atmosphere. There aren't a lot of tables to sit at when you go in, but the people are always very welcoming. The food is always ready quickly and it's delicious. So that makes up for a lack of atmosphere. So that, and I love it because it's got so many memories of going there with my father, having delicious food and spending great time together. So perhaps sometime if you come to my city, you could visit this. I would even love to take you. And that's it, okay? So once you, and, and that was just using this outline to keep my ideas flowing and make sure not to say thank you at the end, right? So hopefully that helped you. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Okay, so this outline is useful not only for English, I wanna tell you that. It's for any language. It, master, it unlocks many doors. Writing essays, giving presentations, speaking topics, Master it, master it, master it, and see what happens. I've recently had uh, a university student studying law who came to me and said, I've, I've gotten 70s on these writing tasks. And we hadn't studied writing tasks. We had been working on IELTS. And um, so what I did was I said, you know what? I'm going to teach you the outline. And I taught her the outline. And the next two grades that she got were an A and an A+. Plus on a writing task. And I believe they were less than 500 words. But because she was able to organize her ideas and flow her ideas, it drastically improved her writing. Okay? And when we applied that, I, that to her IELTS speaking tasks that we were practicing in class, she did so much better. She was able to fill all of the time easily, not ramble, keep on task, and be interesting. Okay, and her father even said that he'd seen a difference in the way that her thoughts were organized and coming out in her speech. So this works. This works, and I really encourage you to get that golden key. Get that golden key. Master this. Review this lesson. Practice it with your IELTS speaking. Practice this. 
and, and, and see what it can do for you. And that is my gift to you today, the golden key for, of outlines for your reading, writing, presentations, and speaking tasks. All right. So I am Teacher D. You can see me on italki. There's so many other great teachers that are doing live streams. Stay tuned for the next one. It's going to happen in about 15 minutes from now. And I encourage you to take your golden key and unlock your future with it for your writing, speaking, and your presentation tasks. Thank you so much, everyone. And I will see you next time. Bye.
skeletons in you. Having a man? You were having a man before. I was having a man before. Yeah. Not understanding anything she was saying. Yeah, exactly. So there you have it. There's our British and American slang. Tell us what you thought of it. Did you understand it? And we'll see you next time. My name is Bo Nguyen, tên tôi là Bo Nguyen. It's really amazing thing for me. From uh, from Ateki, I can meet people around the world, and they can give me more energy to live and more inspiration to live in the world also. Very magical, yeah. When uh, when I can go on lesson and I feel that. Uh, I'm doing a very good job and then working at home with a very wonderful team. Uh, I think that I can do something and, uh, and I, I'm doing something here. I think that I can uh, say idea and talk with people. That is the first motivation for me to come here. The second thing that I can have some money for my life to make my life become better and uh, more comfortable. It's a very wonderful website of Adekay because Adekay is the connection between the every people in the world with each other. There are many purposes for to learn a new language. Innovation is the most important. Not only study language, but also share an idea and culture and everything else in the life. And through the learning and, uh, and teaching, and uh, we can share more ideas and we can share our life better. You know, you know that because each person have a, their own experience and their own knowledge and their own way of living. And when we meet the new people and we think that we are, we are discovering a new universe or a new area or something like that. <laughs> so it's wonderful that we have this diversity and we should just learn from each other. But if you at least just learn a second language and expose yourself to a second culture, not only do you understand that culture better, but you understand your own culture better. And if most people just did that and were talking openly and honestly about themselves and other people, I don't think there would be any diversity problems. Because we're all learning from each other. He is a very good student. He studied very well and he just learned for, you know, he just only studied for one month, but now he can speak very much with me. Later on, yeah, the student and the teacher can meet in uh, in a different country, and then uh, the relationship be become very good. We drink coffee together, and we uh, go uh, and I ride a motorbike, and I take them uh, along uh, somewhere beautiful together, and we uh, talk together, and then they come back to their country, and we become teacher and student again. We study again, yeah. The number of refugees worldwide has reached historic levels as tens of millions of people seek asylum from conflicts in their home countries. Even for those able to reach countries willing to take them in, rebuilding their lives and careers in unfamiliar societies often proves challenging. For one group of refugees living in Istanbul, teaching online Arabic lessons to students across the world has offered a way to overcome these obstacles and establish new hope. As well as earning income, they have been able to share their experiences with people from different cultures and backgrounds, cultivating meaningful relationships with students. My name is Rahaf and I'm from Latakia, Syria. Previously, I had a normal but busy life. My name is Abdullah and I'm a Syrian guy from Homs, the capital of funny jokes. Hello, my, my name is Amr. Uh, I'm an Arabic teacher on italki. Uh, I'm from Egypt. Hi, I'm Hossam. I'm from Syria, Al Haseka, and I'm a teacher on Italki now. Three years ago, I came to Turkey, to Istanbul. Many challenges uh, came in one time. Leaving a country is not, or leaving your home. This is one. It's like fish out of the group. I mean, yeah, my, the challenge that my career is almost dead. This is the only challenge now.
online teaching, yeah, it, it solves this problem, of course, because you can just be wherever and get online and start your class. What italki offered me is like new students I have never met from another continent, way far from me, wants they want to like learn my language. I feel like this is like I feel sometimes emotional. Italki. Besser College and NGO Small Projects Istanbul are working together on this project. You know, it's important for people to kind of see um, and get to know someone who's experiencing a difficult time or who um, has had a, a difficult past and to um, just remember people are people are people. We need to remember that, um, you know, we're, we have a shared humanity and I think that gets lost a lot in the media or in the news. I'm teaching Arabic for first-year students of Arabic in America. Um, we both enjoy teaching and learning online. Uh, it's an amazing experience for me as a teacher. I find it so helpful for me, also for the students. Going into it, people might like like have these assumptions that you're supposed to like learn something about refugees or like understand something new. But I think it's like most valuable to realize that like you're not really learning anything new other than that like this is like just just another person just like you my tutor Mohammed was like so nice and so willing to work with my level of speaking and comprehension at the beginning teaching online was a new experience for me and it had a, a lot of challenges but now I'm used to it and honestly I am enjoying teaching Arabic on iTalk. I care now. I care more. I care more about the language. I care more about my students. Teaching Arabic is something valuable for me. Maybe give me hope or I feel gain hope. I, it's reward for me. Hi, I'm a language learning app. Can we move on? This is a dog. I don't have a dog. Repeat after me. This person eats bread. I want to practice English for my job interview. <laughs> Incorrect. You haven't reached this lesson yet. Now repeat after me. This person eats bread. Fine. This person eats bread. That's better. Moving on. ¿Cansado de aplicaciones de idiomas inflexibles? Usa italki para aprender como tú quieras aprender y estudiar cualquier idioma con nativos. Meet Peter. He is learning Chinese. He was studying on his own with textbooks, flashcards and apps, but is still having problems with basic conversation. This is Maria. She loves learning English, but she doesn't have many opportunities to use it. With italki, Peter and Maria are able to get personal online lessons to help them become fluent in a foreign language. You can start learning a language on italki today. Just follow these three simple steps. 1. Select the language. English, Spanish, Chinese, French, Japanese. Italki has teachers for every language. 2. Select the teacher. With italki, you can choose from thousands of experienced teachers from all over the world. And three, schedule a lesson. Online language lessons are the next best thing to living in a foreign country. With italki, you'll have a personal language teacher and real conversations with native speakers. Every day, thousands of people are connecting to international teachers through italki. Find a teacher today and become fluent in a foreign language. My name is Tom. I'm from the US. I'm a chemical engineer and I'm passionate about language learning. I've used italki to learn eight languages to a conversational level. I grew up in Colorado where I was exposed to many different cultures which cultivated my interest in languages. One of the first languages I became conversational in was Norwegian. I decided to book a trip to Norway 
To prepare, I found a group class with around seven people. Not only were they extremely expensive, it was around $40 to $50 per lesson, but progress was also frustratingly slow due to the size of the class. I heard about italki from a positive view from a famous polyglot. I was amazed to discover that I could learn any language I want, one-on-one, -on -one, and for the fraction of the price as offline classes. I thought, how is this even possible? I immediately signed up with two teachers in Norwegian. One teacher, we would have conversation lessons and go through a textbook. And with the other teacher, we would go through worksheets and chat about random things. So essentially, I structured the classes in a way that would suit my own learning style, which never would have happened without Italki. Within a year, I was relatively fluent in Norwegian. I was so happy that I could actually go to the country and use the language in a practical setting. And the best part is that I really enjoyed the learning process. I thought, why stop there? I picked up Italian and mixed my interest in Italian cooking with lessons on italki. Cool. Uh -huh. All right. Hi. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hi. I'm Karen. And um, I'm looking forward to chatting to you uh, today. I'm going to take today a little slower, all right? Um, and I hope that you will, um, yeah, all join with me in feeling more relaxed and less stressed. Uh, how are you? How was your weekend? Many of you, I know and I have seen before. So <clears throat> it will be nice to know who is with me. I, oops, I am looking at both the italki platform and the YouTube platform for comments. So please do just use your comments. Okay, I hope really to be able to uh, engage with you this morning. I hope to talk through stress management with you. It's a good topic for right now, isn't it? Uh, hi, Carol. Yeah, I'm, uh, Carol says, hi, Prof. Nice to see you again. I'm good, and you? I'm really, really well, thank you. Um, I love engaging with you, with people from all over the world. I think it's marvelous. Um, I learn so much from doing that. <clears throat> now, um, yeah, I've just been doing some gardening and I've washed my hands, but they aren't entirely. <laughs> ah, you also enjoy gardening. <laughs> And you take photos, okay. Yeah, I've been doing my gardening and I've washed my hands, but you can still see traces of garden in my fingernails. So excuse me. Um, I, <coughs> I um, love my gardening. I like, I need to get outside into the sun every day. It's important for me. I need my vitamin D. Um, and um, yeah, I love um, gardening and reading and um, painting and many other things like that. For those of you who don't know, my name is Karen and I am from South Africa, uh, which is a country, by the way, not a region. Um, if you want to talk of the region, it's Southern Africa and I'm from Johannesburg and I've been doing teaching, well, I've been teaching English for quite some time. All right, so now we're going to go into stress management and I am just going to go through just briefly what we did last time, then we will go um, into the next thing, okay. So I am looking for everyone. Okay, so we are saying, what is stress? Uh, we talked about how it affects your immune system, your nervous system. We talked about feeling tense, um, under pressure, 
and the, fa <coughs> the fact that it can be positive. Remember that your input is very important. I need to, I don't regard myself as the expert. I can learn from you. All right. So I am just helping you with the words, the vocabulary, with the idioms, with the concepts a little bit, but you help me. We all help each other to face stress right now. All right. And then we looked at stress idioms, things like get on somebody's nerves, snap somebody's head off. I've had it up to here. He drives me crazy. My head's about to explode. Okay. All right. I can't take it anymore. I'm feeling stressed out. I'm feeling so wound up and tight inside. I need to wind down. Okay. All right. Um, you are under pressure. We are snowed under. We are up to our ears. Yeah. And then reach your limit. Blow off steam. In other words, you need to find a way of de-stressing. Put your feet up means to take a rest. Um, to bury your head in the sand means you don't want to face the problem. And to be at your wit's end, you don't know what to do. You're feeling very stressed. And that's what we came up with. Uh, we talked about how negative stress affected our body. We talked about the first thing to do is to do task and time management and to remove many things, even entertainment from our day. Okay. Um, then we talked about the need for solitude and silence. And we talked about mindfulness and gratefulness. Okay. Now, we also <coughs> talked about how important a place was. Sometimes a place just gives you a feeling of peace, of, of being away from the busyness, of relaxation, of spiritual connection, of, um, of looking at something that is bigger than yourself and very interesting. All right. So now we are going to go on to this one, relaxation techniques. All right. Some people talked about yoga and I'm going to write here. Okay. So what relaxation techniques have you come up with? What relaxation techniques do you know? What relaxation techniques? Right, I will go to the slide that some people like yoga. Okay. All right. Okay. So, what other things do you think you can do to relax? The actual techniques, the things that help you to relax. I know about the muscle, sorry, focusing on muscle relaxation. Okay. Oh, yoga somehow started there. Okay. So, yeah, oh, yes, Carol, relaxing massages, absolutely. Now that, I would put at the top of my list, if I could have a massage every week, I would. <laughs> I love relaxing massages. Massages, okay. Okay, the um, 
focus on muscle relaxation is when you tense up your muscles and then you relax them and you you do that all the way from your your head your neck your arms your body your legs you do all tense and then relax and then you focus on each muscle you don't focus on your problems you just focus on relaxing the muscles um yeah um what other things can you do to what other techniques do you know for relaxation I know that some deep breathing is also useful. So if you breathe in deeply and then breathe out slowly through your nose, that is also one way of decreasing your heart rate and helping you to relax your muscles. Okay. Um, what else? Anyone got some? Got some ideas? All right. Okay. I'm looking for my... Okay, so relaxation techniques are helpful in the evening to help you calm down, but also in the middle of the day when you need to relax and take things calmly. Okay. All right. Um, here we're going to go on to the next slide. Okay. All right. So then entertainment, TV, videos, coffee, diet, etc. All right. So what about these things? Um, is entertainment uh, like going to see a movie, a concert, um, a TV show, um, Things like that, is it helpful for you? Uh, ah, Carol says, there are some videos that teach you how to relax. I know, on YouTube, YouTube is very, very useful. And um, it does teach you how to relax. So it's very, very interesting. Okay, all right, so now, um, I think entertainment, I don't know why my capitals aren't working, <laughs> helps us focus away from a problem. Okay, so there is a point for entertainment, okay? But many people actually say that television or something like that, especially television and movies, get us addicted to them, but don't really help us to relax properly. Okay, so they actually keep our brains too active. So, um, yeah, I think it's helpful sometimes, but sometimes we can rely on them. Okay, then what about things like coffee and tea, etc.? What about the, our diet, the things we drink? Does that affect stress? Why don't you let me know? Uh, do, if you are here, please tell me your name and please tell me, I know, I know where Carol was, it is from, she's from Northern Italy, please tell me where you are from and we will work from there. Okay. Okay, I do not see anybody on the italki platform yet but i know that can take a long time so tell me how do your drinks affect what happens to you 
alcohol sometimes has a relaxing effect. Sometimes it stimulates you. Let's write that down. Alcohol can relax, but it can also stimulate. Okay. And it can be dangerous to rely on alcohol to relax. Okay. So that's not the best thing. Uh, what next? What else can we do? Um, coffee is definitely what we call a stimulant. Okay. A stimulant. Coffee is a stimulant. Aha. Uh -huh. Carol says, I think that a good movie and music relaxes me or can relax me. And I don't think about my current problems, um, current, but when I watch some breaking news, I become very upset. Yeah, and I think that's a very good point. Sometimes I have to completely break the cycle of looking at um, um, the news because even if I don't know what's going on, it can upset me and stress me out. So I, I often don't. Sometimes I just read news headlines. But um, that is a good point. The news is something we can leave out when we're feeling stressed. Um, <clears throat> we will know the news tomorrow or the next day or the next week. It doesn't matter. If something's very important, people will tell us. But otherwise, we don't have to watch the news. Okay, so a good movie and music. And then um, oh yeah, tea. Now tea does have caffeine in it, but uh, black tea does also have something in it which helps you to relax. That's why the British, when you've had a shock, always give you or offer you a cup of tea okay yeah yeah carol says that chamomile relaxes her a lot um like a few other tisans okay we don't use the 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 word tisan that much in english i think there are quite a few english speakers who don't know what it is. So just be aware of that. It's a good word, uh, but it's um, not used that frequently. Okay. Um, we would just say hot drink of some sort or um, infusion or something like that. <clears throat> Sometimes a smell can help to relax you. So there are some beautiful vanilla or lavender or um, what else is supposed to be relaxing. Lavender is the most famous one for relaxing people. Um, and that's great. I find that I have to, um, if I want to sleep properly, I have to switch off movies, television, at least one hour before bedtime so that I can sleep properly. And you know how important a good night's sleep is. It really helps you the next day to face all your challenges. Okay. All right. So tell me now. Um, all right. What about diet? Can diet do make a difference oh, sorry. okay in other words what you eat can diet make a difference do you think what you eat actually makes a difference to how you feel um and i'm sure you know the answer to that um yeah yeah. So um, let's see. D 
diet is very important. It's actually more important when we feel like sugar, when we feel like um, oil or fatty foods, when we're stressed, that's the exact time when we can't eat them. So um, we need to eat healthily when we, <laughs> all the time, but sorry, okay. Uh, Um, and cut down on sugar. Sugar actually uh, stimulates you and adds to the whole stress cycle. I don't have sugar anymore, um, not even in chocolate. I'm glad there are sugar-free chocolates, but sugar is very, very important to remove from one's diet if you're feeling stressed. Okay. And then to eat lots of vegetables and fruit. Of course, you know that. Um, what else? Um, yeah, those, your body needs to focus on. Yes, to Carol says, Absolutely, yes, because junk food like hamburgers or fried potatoes are heavy and difficult to digest, and then it's hard to sleep um, or to work during the day. Yeah, so I long ago, I have, I left out all carbohydrates in the middle of the day because I started to fall asleep after I had had my sandwich at work, and so I stopped and I'd rather have a salad, a chicken salad, or a something else, a yogurt uh, with some fruit in, because then I could um, actually not fall asleep, because complex carbohydrates do make you fall asleep. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, it'll be nice to see if anybody else is here today, and then we'll go further. Um, yeah, junk food also adds to the health problems. So your body doesn't need to be coping with health problems and stress. Stress can be too much. Um, yeah, so the stress of a wedding can be too much as well. Okay, I am just, okay, exercise, okay. All right. Okay. All right. So exercise is something that um, obviously, you know, is vital. Um, and one of the um, most important, um, mm, sorry, um, exercises you can do is aerobic exercise. In other words, exercise that helps your muscles to pump blood a lot and fast. Okay, so you will be out of breath. That's, the, that's one of the definitions of aerobic. You're pumping oxygen very fast around your body. So, oh, excuse me. Oh, goodness. Um, I need oxygen, obviously. So um, the, these also what helps with stress is these endorphins and serotonin that is re released, um, let go during your time of exercise. So that those are the, the those are the names of the hormones that you may find in English literature. I'm going to put that. Serotonin is the happy hormone, okay? Serotonin is the happy hormone, all right. And the endorphins help you to relax and also to feel happy. 
All right, and then your aerobic exercise. And uh, sorry. And aerobic. Uh, all right. So anaerobic is when you do when your muscles um you're doing the word makes you out of breath. Um oh yeah, it, yeah, makes you go out of breath. So out of breath doesn't mean quite out of breath, it's just that you're breathing faster. Okay, so it is a good thing. Um, so Carol says, Prof, the word makes you out of breath is a good thing in meaning or not with a question mark is it a good thing yes it's it's a it's a, a good it is a good a thing um short of breath means you can't breathe but out of breath just means you running so much that you your breath is fast okay i'm i'm really out of breath it's i need to stop now but it's been it means that i've had a good exercise, okay. All right. And then an aerobic exercise is when you work to strengthen your muscles. Okay. An aerobic, it's it's like the weight lifting. Um, and that's very good because of course your posture is important when you are stressed when you are stressed you tend to hunch over why because we there's so much else we can't concentrate on our posture but we need to so we hold our shoulders back and we sit up straight because that keeps our um the muscle called the diaphragm that helps us to breathe it keeps at working properly. If we are hunched over, our muscle underneath here, underneath our rib cage, that helps us to breathe, goes up and down like that, um, doesn't work properly. Let's see. And we don't get any, um, any help, any help with oxygen so we get less oxygen so it can make us very tired so that is actually important because keeping an aerobic exercise going helps us to strengthen all our muscles and our back all right and then yeah i don't know about you but i find it very difficult to fit in exercise when I am feeling very, very tired. Um, I find it um, almost impossible. And yet it's the very thing that will help me most. Okay. All right. Just a moment. Okay. All right, now we are going to talk about mindset. So making stress work for you, not against you. Okay, all right. So I am going to um, ask you, um, those of you who are too shy to write a comment, do try just write one word, two words. Um, how do you think our mindset? Mindset is um, your state of mind, your mind when it, how you describe your mind. Is it positive? Is it negative? Um, how does our mindset help us when we um, talk about dealing with stress? 
I still don't see anyone on the italki platform, but if you are there, hello, um, it will be good to see you. Um, how do you think our minds can help us cope with stress? Okay. While you are doing that, I will just mention um, when we make stress for work for us, not against us, that is what we really want from this whole stress management. Okay. So, um, okay. So we can change. change our minds about the situation. Okay, so I will give you an example. I had someone recently who um, was um, giving me the silent treatment. You know, the silent treatment, they refused to talk to me. So I decided that I needed to learn to cope with the silent treatment and I needed to uh, be able to respond better. So I decided that it was good for me, uh, would help me to become stronger. And um, I... I weathered it. I'm going to, that's another idiom, actually. I weathered the, weathered it, or I weathered the storm, if it's very difficult, if it's a very attacking kind of situation. So when you weather the situation, you are coping with it. You are, um, um, you are focusing on being strong. Now, it wasn't always easy. Um, yes, but it, it really, really, really helped me to focus on the positive uh, that it would do for me. And I also focused on the fact that maybe the other person just couldn't was weak and couldn't help themselves like I am weak in other ways. So it really helped. Ah, Carol has a uh, um, phrase as a little sentence. Um, it depends on the situation. There are some difficult days and some positive. For example, if you are an unemployed person, you feel a lot of stress. And yes, I think there are many people who are going to be unemployed now, and it is going to cause a lot of stress. Um, I think that uh, one of the things to do is just to focus your mind deliberately and very hard and the positive. You know the film uh, Life is Beautiful, La Vita Bella. Um, we see how the man focused on the positive and making a joke of some of the most awful situations in life and how to really be um, focused on enjoying life as much as you can or at least pretending to um, for the sake of others. I think um, he took quite a few risks, uh, that man, uh, and it shows how he was determined not to let anyone allow him to be more negative or unhappy. That's not a natural thing. That takes so much uh, practice 
um, you know, when we go through incredibly difficult uh, times, really tough and impossible to understand, then we have to take ourselves to a point where we are thinking more positively. If we can't think that the situation is positive, then making ourselves happier in some way, thinking of something that is positive, like sunshine or air, being thankful for those things. Um, sometimes it is the very, very simple things that keep us happy. And if we focus on simple things, we can be happier. I remember at the uh, in La Vita Bella, um, uh, the the um, man going, uh, yes, he he was in the concentration camp, and yet he got an opportunity to play um, a music for his wife. He took a risk, and he was uh, dragged out of there by the prison guards. But he did that, um, and it was absolutely amazing. Okay, are there other things that we have not covered where we uh, look at stress? Um, um, what else can we do in terms of stress? Um, actually, you know, one of the best things being exercise, when we exercise, we also release and let go of um, sorry, I'm going to turn off the sound. Um, let go of those negative hormones, the adrenaline that builds up and it helps it to get out of our bodies. So what else have you heard on stress management? Otherwise, I see that we finished today very early uh, because we... Um, didn't have as many people joining in. So I will go through the stress idioms, okay? I will go through the stress idioms, okay? Once again, just to help you remember them. Okay, so if you have too much on your plate what does that mean again do you remember that if you have too much on your plate or if you have a lot on your plate what does that mean for stress what does that mean for stress It means that you have got too much work, you have got too many problems, you have got too many negative problems that cause tension. So sometimes you might have a problem at home, you might have a problem in yourself, and you might have, sorry, you might have a problem at work. Then it all builds up. That's a, another expression that I, I didn't use yesterday. It builds up and you eventually get to the point where you have too much on your plate. You cannot manage. Okay. Then um, if somebody gets on your nerves, okay, you, they, so gets on your nerves, okay. That's right. Eduardo says it means you have too many things to do and it's kind of overwhelming. Thank you very much, Eduardo. All right. So then we're going to talk about getting on somebody's nerves. What does getting on somebody's nerves mean? What does getting on somebody's nerves mean? Okay. When uh, that woman 
was talking to me and talking to me and talking at me. She wasn't talking. She wasn't having a conversation. She was having a monologue and she was getting on my nerves. Okay. It just means a person makes you angry. Yes, absolutely. Because they, that really, um, it doesn't need to be a person. It can be a noise or a situation. But when the example that I gave, a person makes you angry. Yes, I feel angry because it's like she's finding my nerves in my body and pulling them. And I'm going, <laughs> okay. So then I might, if someone gets on my nerves, I might get to the point where I snap their heads off. What does snap someone's head off mean? I snap that woman's head off. She was just so impossible. We notice I'm blaming her, not myself. I think when we manage our stress, we can't control others. We can only control ourselves. So um, snapping someone's head off is my problem, even if I and feeling irritated or angry is my problem. And that's one of the ways we can help to control our stress. So snap someone's head off means to get angry at someone, to get angry at someone. All right. You imagine just <laughs> snapping their head off, taking it off their heads. Okay. However, oh, uh, it's there. Eduardo, it's there. It's up on the screen uh, to snap someone's head off. All right. Snap someone's head off. There's a list there under stress idioms. The first one is have too much on your plate. The second one is get on someone's nerves. The third one is snap someone's head off. Okay. Yeah, Carol says I can't control myself. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly when you feel too irritated. And that's sometimes a signal for people to go, oh, let me stop my behavior. Because <laughs> obviously I'm doing something wrong. Okay. I eventually snapped. I eventually snapped, Eduardo, it's there on the screen. I eventually snapped. It's one, two, three, four, five, six lines down from the, the first, well, the first line is stress idioms. The sixth one is I eventually snapped. So um, it just means I had too much on my plate and I eventually snapped. I couldn't take it anymore. I just had a breakdown doesn't mean angry or anything like that but I snapped I eventually snapped okay so all right so then we're going to go all right I've had it up to here all right I've had it up to here okay so that's everything that's bothering you and it's normally about a person actually, um, or the amount of work that a person is giving you. I've had it up to here. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of sinking. Uh, it's like the situation is above my head and I'm drowning in the situation. Okay. Yes, I am full of this thing. That's right. I'm absolutely just it's too much for me i don't want it anymore i can't cope with it anymore i have to go away from it somewhere All right eduardo can you see the screen properly can you see the words on the screen because uh, i can now um do something to make them bigger uh, um all right just let me know, Do you, yes, please make them bigger or no, it's okay. All right. 
All right, then um, he drives me crazy. Again, that's blaming somebody else instead of blaming myself for feeling crazy. He drives me crazy. Same as someone gets on my nerves. Exactly the same thing, okay? Okay, good. I'm glad you can see it, Eduardo. Good. Bienvenido, uh, by the way. Um, you, you arrived at 12, so I didn't have time to welcome you. Um, yeah. So it's it's great to have you with me. Okay. Now my head's about to explode. Okay. Normally that's when things are are you know when you're so tense that you get this tension headache in your head and you've got so much in your head from all the situation and thinking about it that you say my head's about to <laughs> explode. Okay, my head's about to explode. Thank you, Eduardo. Uh, he says, you are very thoughtful. Thank you. Um, my head's about to explode means, I normally means I've got a headache, it means, or it means I've got too much information in my head. Okay. All right, stress idioms and expressions. Have a lot on your mind. Have a lot on your mind. I think that... I've studied too much and my head's too about to explode. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's great, Carol. <laughs> okay, have a lot on your mind means there are a lot of situations and difficulties that you are thinking about and processing. Okay, I can't take it anymore. I cannot cope anymore. I cannot have any more problems come my way. I cannot carry them. Okay. I can't stand it. Okay. This one is. Okay. I can't stand the way. Um, he. Um, he. He. What? What? I don't know. I can't stand the way he puts his feet up on the desk when I'm talking to him, okay? I can't stand it. It means it stresses me, all right? I choose to allow it to stress me, but I can't stand it, okay? All right, what does he's not feeling himself mean? What does he's not feeling himself mean? Uh, uh, my boss got angry today. He never does that. He's obviously not feeling himself. I wonder what's stressing him out. What does he's not feeling himself mean? Okay. Can't stand it means, um, yeah, I can't take it, but he's not feeling himself. Um, can't stand it means can't tolerate him. Can't stand him would be can't tolerate him. Yeah, yeah. But if it's a situation, not. He's, fe he's not feeling himself. In other words, he's not acting as calmly as he normally does. He's not acting or behaving like normal. So he behaves differently he's yes he acts weird because of the stress he doesn't he doesn't behave it isn't his normal behavior as carol says it isn't his normal behavior well done okay feeling stressed out or stressed or wound up let's do wound up because i know that caused a, a little bit of difficulty what does wound up mean what does wound up mean? Oh, I'm feeling so wound up because, um, uh, first of all, my car broke down. Then there was a traffic jam. Then um, I lost my keys as I was climbing out my car. Then I was robbed. Um, and then 
um, the lift didn't work, so I had to climb all the stairs. Then my boss shouted at me, so I'm feeling very wound up. I'm feeling very wound up. It just means that you've fed up. Is a, Actually, I'll come back to fed up. Actually, that's a very good um, word, um, I, which I didn't include. And I'm going to write it, if you don't mind, underneath wound up. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. All right. So wound up just means you're feeling very tense. You're feeling very tense. Okay. Just note the difference. There is a difference. I'm going to put this in brackets because the, there's a different meaning for to wind, sorry, wind someone up. Okay. To wind someone up, um, you wound up, you've just about on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Well done. Okay, you're on the verge of a nervous breakdown. It just means you feel very tense. Um, I don't know if you, you had toys where you wind it up and it's the, so that there's a lot of tension in the toy. And then when you let it go, it goes, and it, it does its thing. It either plays music or it goes round and round. Um, yeah, things like that, okay? Um, to, to be wound up just means to feel really tense. However, be careful, be careful, be careful. To wind somebody up means to tease them, to make a joke about them in a nice way. Okay, to wind somebody up. That's British, by the way. It's only found in Britain. I do, I'm pretty sure it's not found in America. It's not found in South Africa. And I'm pretty sure it's not found in Australia or New Zealand. Okay. Now to come to Carol's, I'm fed up. It just means I've had it up to here. I can't take it anymore, okay? I'm fed up. I've had enough of this. Actually, that one, I'm fed up, expresses anger, okay? I'm fed up with his behavior. I've had it up to here. I'm fed up and I'm angry. That is it, okay? All right? Okay, sometimes we get ourselves into stressful situations, don't we, by our thinking. Ah, oh, dear. All right. All right. Under a lot of pressure. You know, pressure is when um, literally forcing down. I'm under a lot of pressure. I'm feeling a lot of stress. I'm under a lot of pressure from outside. Um, I'm being, uh, my boss is asking me to do to work two hours overtime every night. I cannot see my children. I'm struggling to, to um, get time for exercise. I'm struggling to eat properly. Um, I, my boss keeps on giving me more and more and more work and I cannot do it all. I am under pressure. Just imagine something pushing on your head. That's what under pressure means, okay? We are snowed under. Let's see if you know what that means. We are snowed under. Yes, Carol says stress for under pressure. That's correct. Uh, what does snowed under mean? Snowed under. We are snowed under with work. It's normally to do with work, and actually, unless you mean that your house is literally under a lot of snow. When you talk about work, you say, oh, gosh, I'm snowed under. I, oh, it's just, I won't say anymore because I want to know if you can explain it to me. Yes, submerged. In other words, the, the, the work is this level. It's not this level. The work is piling up and 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 you are snowed under with work. You cannot find your way outside of work 
because there's so much of it. Okay, so good. All right, we are overworked. Okay, we are up to our ears in work. Same thing uh, means you're doing or working overtime. All right, now to wind down. Let's see if you know now, if you remember what to wind down is. What is to wind down? Let me know on the screen. When we wind down, it means we start relaxing. That tension that we have wound up is now starting to wind down again all right so we are starting to relax we want to go away for a week and wind down i'm going to go to the sea and i'm going to paint and i'm going to write and i'm going to uh, spend time with friends okay all right all right in other words i have de-stressed i am relaxed and calm, all right? Okay, all right. Now reach your limit, reach your limit means that's that's as far as I can go. Hmm, who remembers what blow off steam means, okay? It might be something to do with, I can't stand him or he gets on my nerves then you go to blow off steam so that you don't snap, okay? <laughs> snap his head off, okay? So that what does to blow off steam mean? You have done absolutely amazingly, by the way. I have enjoyed your participation and it is um, really something I can learn from. It is uh, something I enjoy. And um, so do, um, yeah, do have a good time. Um, carry on just participating. I love it when you participate. Okay, so to blow off steam means to, to like when you exercise, you're getting rid of all the negativity in you. You, if you want to blow, yes. If you want to, yes. If you, not quite explode, but you can explode privately. So you blow off steam, you go running, you go boxing, you go um, shouting at the moon or something like that. Um, and um, yeah, you're blowing off steam. All right. I am now going to stop here tomorrow I am talking about weddings I will not do my stress management on Wednesday <laughs> because I can see we're finished I thought we would take longer uh, but I'm doing weddings I'm going to make it more simple more basic and um, but I will discuss with you traditions um, from your countries and my country and England and um, We'll talk about all the words you need. We'll give you idioms, lovely idioms. And I hope that uh, you will really, really enjoy it. I've had a great time with you. And as usual, it's fantastic. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, Stay safe.